Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, May 2nd at 6.25 p.m. I call this meeting of the Brookfield Select Board to order. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Announcements. Um, annual town elections will be held on Monday, May 6th. Polling hours at Town Hall are from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. For more information, please visit the Town Clerk's webpage at www.brookfieldma.us. Uh, please remember to vote. And a reminder, town offices are closed on Monday, May 6th for Election Day. So the, uh, the only thing that will be going on in Town Hall that day is voting. Uh, Brad, will you warrant us up? Yeah, FY2422 withholdings $29,383.85. FY2421 withholding $31,800.57. FY2422 payroll $191,470.97. FY2422 accounts payable $414,448.98. All right, thank you, sir. Um, uh, first up on the agenda is the Sun Fusions host community agreement, but I believe Mr. Fromm's lawyer's not here. So could I get a motion to take things out of order so we can get things done? So moved. Uh, second. All right, uh, all in favor of taking agenda items out of order, please say aye. 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 All right, I'll take a little guidance. From, um, shall we, uh, uh, since I believe Ellen is here, should we uh, go to that matter first? Sure. All right, just to uh, show. Uh, be courteous to the scheduled people who are here for the this meeting. Is the set, this is the first All one right. Um, I don't know if it's Ellen, the one that's in your, okay. would you come up go. and join us, please? Thank you. And Brad, I'm checking you're, you're, I think you're more familiar with this than me. Um, no, I think there was two separate things. Okay. And what I was going to talk about was going to be very brief. Okay. Because of the nature. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we got the email about the issue with um, a resident's eligibility. Mm -hmm. And this is something that she's worked on with Kelly. It's been something in progress for months now. Mm -hmm. And I believe is it in the field? No, um, I don't you know. Have, I honestly I don't know. <laughs> There's too many uh, fingers in the pot yeah. and too many. Uh, so I don't know what you have compared to what I have. I, received, I only have the conversation you and I have. Okay. Yeah. So you get a phone call from someone? No. How did you know about it? Did you get this package? No. You were you had given it to Tom or something? No. The individual gave it to Tom. Yeah, there was a written package so, that was delivered to somebody on the So again, I, I got a phone call. It's in your packet, Tom. You got okay. a phone call. I got a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a phone call from the individual or did you get a phone call? <laughs> I got a phone call from the individual that had said that there was a packet submitted to Select Board and gave me the substance of what was in the packet. So, and so you've looked over the packet. I have not gotten anything okay. the packet. So again, I don't know what's in the packet unless it mirrors the one she sent to my boss at the Mass Department of Veteran Services. My understanding is it's the same contact. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I haven't seen it, so. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm confused why Brad called me. Was it from a phone call from Beth? So no. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure no, out what. No, it, it wasn't. Okay. No, I asked for this to get put on the agenda because I received a phone call from the individual that had submitted a written packet because they said, "Hey, this packet is coming. I want you to be aware of it." Okay. And and uh, I asked for it to be placed on the agenda, and I don't I don't know why you had or who had contacted you or what. It was in regards to the email from. Right. Okay. Yeah. Not from not the individual. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. So. Okay. So, for, so for this to move forward, Beth, I put this on the agenda at your request. I didn't realize right. that it was. I, so, so I was so on the expectation that you had already were familiar. I, with the details I didn't. Of what was I didn't. I didn't have what was in the packet. Okay. That that's. Point. I was told I would be getting a copy of it 
I hadn't seen it. <clears throat> well, she put specifically to Tom, I believe, and that's why I gave it to Tom. But there is an extra one because she also left one for Kelly. If okay. you want, I can go grab it so, for you. Uh, but fundamentally, on a very high level, um, it sounds like in, in talking to the individual, from what I understand, their situation is somewhat water under the bridge, right? There's been a state determination or what have you. Um, but my concern is, is it sounds like we're taking a very like, different approach with our veterans in town right now from a process perspective where it's like in aerospace, like we talk about inspecting to accept versus inspecting to reject. And it sounds like that there's been a, a very significant step function change in how we're making certain determinations. Mm, yeah. um, and at least the individual claims that she's in town, at least on the weekends, still owns the property, still is a registered voter in the town of Brookfield. I don't know if she's got a vehicle and plays, pays excise taxes. I'm, I, I know we've got other people in town who, um, you know, we, we, we question their, their, their status, yeah. right? For the matter of sensitivity yeah. to the issue in the case, yeah. is there any exemptions we can put this under? And maybe you mean by exemption, you mean executive session? Right. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. I, I've read I've read all the available reasons for executive session. And I don't think there this. Is some. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this falls under it. So. Um, can I, can I just tell you, there's no, no, I don't treat any client any differently unless they need more assistance than the one before. Yeah. Yeah. And, this and, is my Bible. Yeah. This and, is what I, I follow, mm -hmm. uh, what happened. I am new to the program, as you know. You hired me sometime in October. I didn't start till December. I, I, it took me a long time to learn the program because I didn't have an instructor. So I did have the first, the first of January, January fifteenth. My trainer came out to my home, and we and we went over all my paperwork. So I called the in, every individual in December and said, "I'm going to be coming to your home, getting this paperwork. This is what I need." And I showed up at everybody's home in December. I showed up in January to collect all the paper that I gave them the paper, the checklist for. I started with that. My trainer came out in January. She sat down at my kitchen table and we inputted all the information. She gave me some data to put into the program for that individual that was misleading because the paperwork that I had received, not in person. I've been in this program for five months, working for you guys for five months, never met the individual in five months. I've met every single one of my clients here in town and in West Brookfield at least two times, no less than two times, except that individual. Um, I put the information in, the individual contacted me and said I had put the, I had shorted the check. So I went into it, looking into the data, and the reason I shorted the check was because the individual was supposed to apply for something called mass health buy-in the year prior when, when it was being run by somebody else. I quit, called the individual and asked them if they had applied. They said they didn't know. I said, well, we have to apply. I tried, tried multiple times to meet with the individual to put in a new application. The individual lives nine minutes from my home. I tried three times a week for five months to meet with this individual. Never met with the individual. The paperwork came to this office. The, the paperwork came, and I didn't know this till it started to get a little on the ugly side, that all the mail was coming from, us, from out of state. It was being post, the postmark was out of state, Correct. is what you're telling us? Correct. Okay, thank you. Every single thing. The, if you read the letter that I sent the individual, it's legit. So I sent them a notice of, uh, in, uh, notice of intent. This is the reason that your benefits are going to be cut off, if they are going to be cut off. 
I have tried repeatedly to meet with you. I, um, all your prescriptions and doctor's appointments and everything are out of state. You can't get mass health buy-in because you're doing your business out of state. So all of this, well, I didn't mention the mass health buy-in, but all of this, it was legit, wrote it into the na uh, 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 notice of intent, certified it, sent it to the individual. She had 15 days, and they had 15 days to comply with the information that I had been repeatedly asking for. Mm -hmm. 15 days came and went. I sent the notice of action stating that I have to cut you off because you did not send me this information. This is all legit. All the paperwork is right here. You're very welcome to look at it. Mm -hmm. So I follow the regulation by, that I follow, CMR 108, and it states right on there. In, and this was something that you were been seeking Kelly's guidance on. Yeah, so, so again, so I tried up until um, March 30th uh, repeatedly to try and meet with the individual to get this straightened out, or March 20th, sorry. And then I called um, the town administrator. I said, this is where I'm at. I cannot legally pay that. Because I can pay it, but you're not going to get reimbursed from the state. Mm -hmm. So Kelly said, if, show me the proof you have. I showed her the proof I have. She said she agrees with me. My town, uh, my um, uh, uh, authorizer at the state level had told me what to do. Um, check to see if the data was correct. Meet with the town administrator or whoever I answered to, which I was told from you guys it was the town administrator. So I met with her, discussed the whole um, process with her, what I did. On April 1st, I sent the first notice. April 15th, sent the second notice. Mm -hmm. But as a, if, if you read it here in um, in the CMR 108, it states. Sorry. Anytime they're outside of the state for more, or anytime they're out for more than seven days, correct. They have to report. <coughs> correct. <laughs> But again, I didn't know that until the multiple mm -hmm. times of trying to get with so the So services are being rendered out of state. Correct. So I can own a house, and I do, or did, own a house in another town, another state. Mm -hmm. I can pay that mortgage, I can pay that water bill, I can pay anything and everything, but if I don't live there, that's not my residence. Correct. That's my understanding. So that's how the state follows it <clears throat> okay. also. So and again, I asked for just prove to me you paid you paid the mortgage in there and not somebody renting it. And I couldn't get it from any of the paperwork that I received. Yeah, there is a letter as of recent, as of April, from the daughter stating that she's been paying it. Right. You saw that. But I haven't gotten that oh. far yet. So that was one of our discussions somewhere in the mids between the 1st and the 30th of March. And if that happens, I have to recalculate. And if you want, I have that paperwork in here. Recalculate your benefits. If you're receiving benefits because your income, your debt to Ratio, your income to debt ratio is different because somebody else is paying those bills, mm -hmm. then you're not going to qualify for our program. Because you're receiving, you're yeah. receiving a gift for payment. Yeah, Correct. It's, it's someone paying your mortgage is effectively income for you. Correct. Yeah, I, that makes so sense. So all of this was discussed. So, so all, so you're saying all of the veterans' benefits, including the the what is the reference the. Um, Again, I don't know what letter you got unless it matches like the one I got. It looks like it was the same stuff. It looks like it's CCD. Um, so the, the scale of the benefits is also related to, to income and debt to income ratio? Correct. So some individuals need more fuel 
assistance or support, some shelter. So if somebody has a mortgage that they can't afford, so you take it, and it's not a calculation I come up with. I put it into the um, DAV system. And so if you have, uh, you only have, say, $2,000 coming in and your mortgage is 500 a month and your fuel is 600 a month, or blah, 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 by the time you're done. Some people we do, we have get shelter, ex uh, shelter expenses. They might have to pay their rent. If they don't have a mortgage, they don't have to pay their mortgage, that kind of thing. Um, but some might need fuel assistance. We also get them into a fuel assistance program, but they might still need a sub, uh, 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 supplement. The individual we're talking about is my only medical only. So that we, we supplement their medical expenses. But it's sti you still have to put into that that your the equip into the equation your shelter and all of that mm -hmm. because if you got three thousand coming in and you got four thousand coming out you need our help. Mm -hmm. That individual qualified for that part, medical only. Correct. But once you start, you have the three thousand coming in and you don't have a mortgage and you don't have electric bill and you don't have a phone bill, whatever the case may be then you don't need our assistance anymore. Does that make sense? Yes. But again, we can take all that off the table, the fact that the individual has left the state for more than seven days disqualifies them. Is it seven days in a certain time period or seven days in a row? Seven days in a row. Anytime, but it's seven days in a row, but I've been dealing with the individual for five months. Five months, I live eight minutes up the street. Never met with the individual. They, they've never... I've seen you in town four times more than I've seen that woman, so... Yeah. And so you, you've attempted set meetings and they've always... And yes. what, what, what has yes. been their response one time, to the meeting, one, meeting requests? One time I did cancel. Um, I mean, I'd have to go back over. Well, I do. I do have. A, I'll take a general idea. So, I'll, 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 so the first time, the, the first things. time, the first time I wanted to meet. Oh, I go by the town hall all, mm -hmm. uh, all the time. I'll drop it. Drop it in your box. Mm -hmm. So again, didn't notice for the first two months that this yeah. stuff was coming from New Hampshire. Yeah. It was just in a mailed envelope. What have you? This went on for multiple uh, time frames. Then it was. Well, when, when I had to get her into the Mass, Bell, Mass Health buy-in, my authorizer was not going to approve the medical payments, the payments to, to, to Social Security or in the reimbursement of Social Security paid to um, uh, their health plan. Mm -hmm. So because they hadn't done, so they told me, you have 30 days to get an application in. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let's, start, let's meet, and I, uh, I'm not in town today. Um, okay, I can be available Wednesday. I can be available Friday. I can be available Monday. Okay, now I'll be available on Saturday, so on and so forth. The one time the individual did say she'd meet with me, I had an emergency. I had to take one of my other veterans or go with one of my other veterans some. To, for a health care, health check. And I, it was all day. I called the, and I texted the individual and he said, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Well, I, I, I'm only available till three o'clock. So I didn't get finished with the individual till near five. I texted them and told them that I'm sorry, but I could meet with you on Saturday. And I got, nope, gonna go home, I'll go back to New Hampshire on Sunday. So I made every attempt. I made more attempts to see her, that individual than I did to see my own child this month, at least five, last five months. So I, so I followed the regular procedures. Mm -hmm. Again, that I was instructed to by my authorizer, by the town administrator, and by CMR 108. Mm -hmm. 
there anything in the uh, in the packet about um, <coughs> about the uh, the, uh, the 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 other the other party's um, attempts to, uh, to to meet with Ellen? Um, not with that level of specificity. The one place where there's agreement is regarding the the schedule time and the and the conflict based on the needs of another veteran. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do believe I have all the dates and times that I. Are we, are we allowed to get commentary from? Uh, um, uh, from as the I, I, yes. Um, um, I don't know if it makes a difference, but this veteran was in the town hall every single month. I was unaware that anyone was trying to reach her. I would have at least passed along a message. But I've met with her once a month. You, you um, met with her once a month. Sorry. The, the one person you're speaking of, I, I met with that individual once a month until the benefits were shut off. Yeah, so until this, this individual Indeed. comes in to pick up their veterans check every Correct. She month. Correct. Call, she calls yep. for the for the check. She calls to make sure the checks are clear, cut, and then she comes down. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to meet with her on those days also. Mm -hmm. Camped up next to the box of checks? Pretty much. Um, you can ask Amy. Um, I don't know if you were there when I was trying to meet with her, but I tried to set up an appointment on January 3rd, January 8th, January 11th, January 18th, January 22nd, February 12th, February 21st. That's when I got the phone call saying her check was short. <laughs> Uh, the 23rd of February, she called because of a different reason. I told her I could meet with her then. March 6th, March 6th, that was, I think I returned her call. Uh, February 23rd, I tried to meet with her and I gave her, I even changed my schedule around so that I could be available and I got, I got doctor's appointments, doctor's appointments, doctor's appointments. So I wrote down all the dates and tried matching them up to the receipts I received. And again, all receipts were from New Hampshire. So if you take the data that I have every day that you... Do you can, you sh can you tell us what town in New Hampshire the uh, service yeah, it's is it's, 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 it's in, in there. there. Oh, it's in there? Okay. Yeah. What, so, what town is it? Since it's in there. East um, Hampstead. Yeah. That's and again, that's where she has her mail forwarded from here. So, so under the assumption that it was me, I came in here and asked where they were they registered or what their census, what the census, and that's um, what do you call it? Uh, open inf information or what have you, and it states that her. Anything from here is mailed to that East Hampstead address. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, nice. so again. All right. So seven days out of state <coughs> over what period of time constitutes a dis discontinuity? Benefit? Seven days. I think it's seven continuous days. Yeah. Represents a a no, uh, a no, something that requires notification. If I understood what you said correctly. Correct. Okay. Correct. And there is a, and there you is can, a, I will <laughs> leave you my copy and come back for it on Monday. There, no, and there is Monday an appeals process to it. What is that? There is an appeals process to it as well, but it I looks know. like they're not appealing. No. And, and I do, if, you, if your information process. is correct, I want you to note that I did not call her a liar. <laughs> I'm assuming when I said I just need proof that you pay these bills, I'm guessing that const constitutes, but um, you know, and every, every one of my other clients, I mean, you can contact every single one of them. I'll give you their phone numbers. Mm -hmm. I've, I've met, been to their <coughs> homes, every single one of them. I met with, I, if I had to go back for any information, I went back for it. Everybody, I do have one check that is messed up and it was my fault. Um, why it's, well, it's not. I, I didn't have enough information, so I shorted her check because I didn't have the information. I went back to get the information, and I'm trying to straighten out her check, but 
that's the only complaint that I've had outside of this. Mm -hmm. So all and we're that. trying to remediate that. Yeah. yeah. And so all so other than that one check that was uh, that you, that you said was shorted, all the other checks have been uh, paid on time or when they expected. No one said that their check has been late or that it wasn't didn't come when it was expected. Yes, this month. It was late because I had emailed the um, uh, your accountant, mm -hmm. and um, she it, the, what do you call it wasn't attached. So I called okay. her and we yes. rectified it. Yes, no. you know Lori's our accountant, right? No, no, oh, I, don't think no I didn't that, need to. No. Ellen, this is Lori. Lori is our town accountant. <laughs> Oh, Lori, no, this is no, out. no. Uh, so it's just since, no, I meant, since, since you're oh, mentioning. you look so different. Sorry, Lori. <laughs> she looks even better. In no, I was thinking Amy. <laughs> yes, in her closet. So, mm -hmm. um, but yes, I screwed up this month and it was, I, I did, forgot to attach the, um, the warrant okay. for the, or yes. the uh, spreadsheet. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, hold on a second. Yeah. So, so, uh, to, to, Address, address issues separately. Yeah. We have the issue of the uh, complaint from the party who um, Ellen has found to be a non-resident and is taking procedural action <laughs> consistent with that. Yeah, I think the challenge is the difference between a resident by one definition and a resident vis-a-vis -vis that particular regulation. So that's yes. where my confusion came in, mm -hmm. is that the the bar for residency is much stricter, is with much the, stricter yeah. there than yes. it is from a standpoint of standard residency law, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, if somebody owns a house in Florida and owns a house in if in if an individual oh, if right. an individual in this program owned a house in Florida and they, owned they it, they would not them. qualify, mm -hmm. right? This is a but, Massachusetts benefit. But, but even Florida. if they just visited a friend in Florida who owned the house that they were staying at, the being there, my, I mean, my be, friend's be mother there. goes to Florida for months on end, and, and, but she's a Brookfield bedroom. resident, right. but she's not here for three, four months of the year. And they wouldn't qualify for that program. And they would be gone, and my understanding is they would be out of state too long Correct. to qualify for this program if Correct. they were otherwise qualified. Right. Okay. It's like, so it, it seems to me that I don't think there's anything actionable. I'm not seeing anything actionable by us here. No, I don't think it's actionable. I think there's an. I think there's a bunch of opportunities for mm -hmm. education, right, for folks that are receiving the benefits, you know, and and part of it is probably the learning curve and the relationship building as a new person in a new position. It's there's always there's always a chance correct, like that, right, correct, and and people's. Approach I, 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 can be very different. I came in here with almost no information. I had to go hunt down the clients. I didn't know. I, I did have addresses from one of the spreadsheets that um, Lori, Lori sent me. Um, so yeah, I, I thought we had overlap between Gary and. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Was there? No. Yes. What, what month was that? December. Gary did the month of December. Uh, right. So he didn't do it with you? He no, he did, did not. No. Okay. Or you didn't do it with him, either way. <laughs> either way. <laughs> so, got it. So the handoff was fumbled even though we had an overlap of a month. Right. Is what it so, uh, again, I didn't know the procedures. I didn't know Lori pays one. Uh, do you pay both? I, so I got two towns. So do, I, do you pay payroll and um, AP? Okay, so the other town doesn't, West Brookfield doesn't. So it's a case of didn't know who to contact for AP. Didn't know, the, she sent me the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet on the new computer that West Brookfield bought me. I couldn't manipulate her spreadsheet, so she print, printed them out for me. So all of that came into effect also. Mm -hmm. um, finding out, the, getting the laptop, getting access to the, to the um, Department of Veterans Services um, program. Yes. Um, I still need to get um, access to <coughs> another program. I'm sorry, I keep pointing at Holly because Holly's been my mentor. Um, Holly is the VA uh, veterans agent for North Brookfield. Okay. So she's been a big support team to me. Um, so it, it's all that, getting to know the clients, getting to know who owns their home, who rents, um, 
who gets fuel, who gets, who needs this, uh, that kind of thing, telling them what they need. The, uh, so I might give them a checklist and say, I need three um, copies of uh, the, the last three bank statements. Well, Gary let us slide. They only made me give you one. And I'm like, okay, but I can't be doing that because I need to reference back and make sure that you're not hiding money or you're, or that you, you had extra money hidden or whatever. I have to follow the rules. So yes, I did let some slide and only give me one. But then I had questions. What is your mortgage? What, you know, you give me a mortgage <coughs> and it says you own $2,000 a month. Is that one month or two because you skipped last month? I don't know. So all of that came into effect. Trying to get training. Well, that's pretty clear from the statement. I mean, that, that's a little bit. That's a little bit of dissembling because in a standard mortgage statement, it's going to tell you what is due that month and what is back due. Right. I mean, that's. I mean, a mortgage statement's mortgage. Right. Statement. Right. It's going to tell you. It's going to tell you that information. Right. So. But again. Right. You so, know. So let's let's make sure that we're using the right examples. So. Um, the bank statement one month back wouldn't necessarily tell you if the mortgage statement. No, but, if but you get an actual mortgage statement, it's going to tell you what's right. What's but the the, che the checklist does say three months. Okay. Yep. So okay. I asked for three months. Some said, "Oh, or let it slide." It's due at the month of January. I'm not supposed to pay February until I have all the statements that I had at all the paperwork that I had asked for, right? Yep. Somebody might be getting a um, check from the VA. Somebody might be getting a military retirement check along with their Social Security. Well, it hasn't come in yet. Can you let me slide? So I don't know. Can I let them slide? Do you know what I mean? So all of this came into effect. Holly will tell you if you, I got the speed dial, Holly on speed dial, Holly, can I do this? Mm -hmm. Tracy, can I do this? I didn't have an authorizer, so I didn't have anyone to contact immediately, you know. What's, okay. An authorizer is the individual at the DAV that looks at my stuff and makes sure I'm correct. I did have some errors in there. We corrected them for March. All better. Mm -hmm. But I, I just closed out January and February. I can't close out March because of the individual that I underpaid from, um, them not giving me enough data or what have you, I can't close out March. All right. So, and then separately, I think Lori raised some concerns. Yeah. And so. Or no. So the issues I have, when Alan started, I did send a packet, because I knew Gary was leaving, I sent a packet with the AP voucher payroll voucher, our warrant schedule, and the last expenditure report, and because Gary had officially left in December, he did the veterans benefits in December, I sent the veterans slips that he did for December as well to show that they were done. It had just basically a template of what would be required for me to pay benefits because I can only receive, I'm sure you know from looking at the warrants, I, I can only have a cover sheet with names, addresses, and dollar amounts. I can get no backup because it's a HIPAA violation. I can't yeah. put that information in the warrant. Mm -hmm. So you get a cover sheet and that is all. So I provided all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the veterans have been on the same schedule for the entire time I've been here. They get paid on the first warrant of every single month. So that's why I put that all in the email. And I sent that over in <coughs> December. I sent the warrant schedule now three times. Might have been four. The veterans were paid, paid late in January, December, and March, I believe, were on time. And then April was extremely late. We just paid them yesterday. No, two days ago. Two days Thursday. Um, when they don't get paid on time, I'm sure Ellen gets angry phone calls, but I get very angry phone calls. Okay. And I'm sure they're leaving angry phone calls in the treasurer's mailbox, too. Um, there are certain veterans I know if they don't get paid on time, they call immediately, which I understand they're meeting for their benefits. Yeah. Um, which, when they don't get paid on time, not only do I get the angry phone calls, which I listen to, 
but now it creates more work because now I have to pull all these checks out of the warrant. I have to arrange for pickup times. Then I have people calling on Tuesday. I had arranged for pickups Monday and said, you could come sometime after one, I'll call you. Now they're calling me at one o'clock, I need my check. You said it would be ready. I said, well, it's an after one. Now I need it now. I said, well, they're not ready. So this all ends up falling back now on me because the checks were late. And in this case, very late. So we need to get consistent with the payments. It's been five months. I'm trying to give it time, but where I'm sending the same stuff over and over again, I'm just wondering if there's a lapse in communication. Like for the April, the original email was sent April 9th with the veterans voucher, and I responded within five minutes and said there's no attachment. I didn't receive word until Monday with a phone call from Ellen saying, the veterans say, are saying they didn't get paid. I said, I know they didn't get paid because I emailed you on the 9th and said there's no attachment. I can't pay them. So I don't know if email's not getting checked enough. I'm constantly available. Um, just, we need to get on a better schedule because everyone is relying on their benefits and I can't be the constant you, you can't be. You can't be buffering for that. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, Gary and I, granted, over five years, there was a hiccup or two, but it was five years. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm okay with it, but it's been five months and we've already had two major hiccups. So Ellen, are you at? First of all, I was told from the Department of Veterans Services that I was not to pay till the last warrant of the month because of the situations like the individual that was paid here for three months and he had been dead for the three months, October, November, and December. So I was told I was not to pay, supposed to pay till the last warrant of the month. Did we communicate that to the population though, to the service? Yes, population. I did. Yes, I did. You did. And again, she is right well, on the January thing. I did, mm -hmm. I did not see that email. We don't have email. an end-of-month warrant. We don't have an end-of-month warrant. We don't have a start-of-month warrant either. No, it's just right. kind of however it falls. It's, right. it's yeah. basically Somewhere two warrants. Every, it's typically every two, two warrants a month. Yeah. It's two warrants a month. Right. right. So, okay. Um, so, okay, so you're saying that in March you sent out a formal communication, or did you call the veterans, or when did you tell them that it was going to move from the first warrant of the month to the end of month? In, in January, when I was told that I could not pay till the last warrant of the month. And again, I was trying to figure out the last warrant because of how it goes with the schedule. Okay, so you've, you've got the warrant schedule. Did we send out, did we actually send it out in writing what the second warrant schedule N is? No, I haven't because I've been trying to get to know the program so that I can send them out. So I have, I had planned and that's why I asked for it the other day because I wanted to send out in, in, for June, I have to have more bank statements or what ha more information. So in June is is a transfer a, a transfer month. So they get their Social Security in December, but we don't change it with the increase. So everybody gets an increase. We don't change that data until June. That gives the DAV time to adjust to the change, put the equation into the system and the members to realize there's gonna be a change. Then come June, we do a mini review, a mini recertify. We ask for either bank statements, changing your um, mortgage or your um, rent, if any rent changes. Um, I don't have a copy of that. Oh, I might here. Um, so we ask for those information again. So I didn't have anything to to send out to the members. So I was creating my own, and it's a, a checklist. So what I was gonna put out was the checklist. This is what I'm gonna need, but I sat them down in January when I was in their home and said, this is what I need to start with. This is what I'll need come June. I was gonna send that out with the new schedule for fiscal year 25. Yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm struggling with the connection between which warrant we pay on and why we wouldn't notice that somebody was dead, but that's a whole Well, the confusion problem. I'm having is this is, I guess, would be my only town that we pay at the end of the month. I do six other towns and everyone else pays 
on the first warrant of every single month. Yeah, I, I, don't, see, I don't see the relationship between those two things. To be no, honest. That, I'm it's sorry, that's what, I was told, that's what I was told. Okay, from that's what you were told. Is there something in writing relative to when we're supposed to pay? I can get it in writing for you. Okay, that would be great, actually. Okay. That'd be that'd be great because honestly, if it's and it depends on whether you're our, our veterans agent or whether you're the state's veterans agent, maybe you're both. No, right? so I I work for you. Right. My job right. is to be between you, the veteran, and the veterans, the DA, Department of Veteran yeah. Services. Yeah. So my job is to make sure that the veteran has what they need, that you provide it for them, <coughs> and that the DAV reimburses you for it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it right absolutely and 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 that's why and, and I get it and and that's why you know I just want to make sure like you said we've got you've got six towns that all the rest of them pay on the first warrant of the month you're saying that there's a policy and you've been given direction it should be at the end of the I month. was told by my uh, authorizer yes okay. that may just be that individual trying to stagger their workload. And unless we've coordinated that shift in timing, when you're talking people who are in a financial, and, and you know this, I mean, you're closer to the population than any of us are. So Correct. I'm sure I'm just preaching to the choir here. Yes. Okay. But I do want to reiterate, we're talking people that are running to the to the knife's edge of stuff, right? And if you're on the knife's edge, that two-week <coughs> shift, especially if it's a two-week shift without warning, could be catastrophic, right? So. And sometimes people only hear half of what we tell them, right? That's why I'm asking, did we notify them in writing that we were going to shift the date, stuff like that? Because when I tell you something, you, hear, you only hear 20% of it. When I give it, when you read it, you, 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 you retain like another 40% of it. Right, and these have been the same veterans, I yeah. think, without yeah. change for the last time. So, so I just want to make sure that, that in this transitional time, we're communicating with people, we're being empathetic about how we're doing these shifts, and, and we need to make certain that we you know, to the best of our ability, you know, have them ready for that, right? And and it sounds like you're doing a good job getting them ready for June, right? But I want to make sure we tell them three times because they only I thought I was twenty percent of it, right? Okay. Um, and uh, I get it, but unfortunately, sometimes message sent isn't message received, right? I mean, you can have two people in a room and, and walk out with three opinions about what was said. I got no doubts about. Correct. Right. So I just want to make sure we're doing the right thing, we're taking the right approach, that, that everybody's getting appropriately communicated to. Are you good now? With Are all of our forms working? Is all of the paperwork that you need to exchange with the town actually working for you or not? It's still not working. So okay. I'm meeting with your IT team. I, I plan to meet with your IT team to see how we could make okay. it work. Okay. So. Jacob, are you He's aware of that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was... are, are you aware of the fact she's having a problem using our forms? Has she set up some time with you to get it screwed No, out? I haven't. Well, I sat with them. No, I was not aware of it. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, I didn't recognize you. Yeah, I can meet with her at any time. Is that? Well, I'm not what, understanding what the issue with our forms are. They're just Excel yes, what, forms. I, I don't what, know. What IT help do you need? What, I, what is the nature of the problem? Honestly, I don't know because I'm working with the program there and then putting it onto the spreadsheets that she was she had given me. Uh, she so, had given who she? Lori. Yeah, Lori. Okay. She. Excel workbooks. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sir Rogers. Yes. Okay. okay. I know your computer is not provided by the town of Brookfield. It, West Brookfield and it's correct, Chromebooks. Correct. Right? Oh. Support Excel. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh, that would be the. Oh, that's the problem right there. Right. Do we have any extra laptops? Um, we have a hot laptop that no, um, I, I could repurpose. You have, you have a what? Uh, it's like a, like a hot laptop that we could use. A loaner. You have a loaner. A loaner. Right? Okay, Sorry. floater. Yeah. So again, this was a big part of the problem back in when I took over getting a laptop from either town. So Westbrook Field agreed to buy the laptop. I bought the printer, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you, but he no did come. He did come and help me. He tried to help me connect to the scanner, but I can't connect to your scanner because your scanner only accepts uh, Brookfield emails addresses, and that's West Brookfield, and so on and so forth. So, took the easy way out. I took the forms. I had handwritten the forms just like Gary had done, and sent them off. 
So I didn't know Lori had an issue with my form. So, yeah. um, Ellen, would you hold on one second? Yeah, it's mostly the, the timing. Yeah. I know we've got other yeah. times. No, no, but right. hold on. Today. Jacob. Yes. Um, my, in conversation with you outside of meeting, my understanding is that the town will be in a position to um, extend to her a Microsoft Office license at some time. Uh, is that, yes. does that have to wait for next fiscal year or is that something we can do sooner? No, I can roll that out for you guys now. Okay, uh, my understanding it is- It would be a Brookfield email address. It would be a Brookfield email address. It would be access to the Microsoft Suite, which I think would Load on a simplify well, yeah. she would have access to right. the web-based Microsoft right. web suite from the Chromebook, yeah. and that would simplify a lot of the challenge, or that should simplify the challenge she's facing and make it easier for her to then fill out the spreadsheet that then Lori needs to see yeah, and so allow her to more problem. easily integrate right. with Lori. So I think, so Jacob, can yeah, we? I, I can do that. Um, and it'll let her, like you said, she'll be able to use Excel um, because it'll be in the cloud. Because it'll be in the cloud. Okay. okay. Let's, All right. let's, let's do that. Okay, so, so Ellen, the, so what Jacob's going to do is he's going to uh, set you up so that you will have access to Microsoft Excel via the Westbrook Field Provided Laptop. And that should, and so the, the so now the expectation is that with that access, you should be able to um, easily fill out the forms and send them to Lori without difficulty. And so you don't need to scan it. Yeah. You just email it. Yeah. Or, or she does need to scan it. Her Brookfield email account will allow her to, we'll uh, allow her to use, to, to use it. Printer. And so yeah. um, uh, Ellen and Lori. And so please work together. If you have trouble getting this sorted out, please come to the board so that we because this is important that we make it it's like we don't want Lori we don't want you having to um to deal with the with the uh the flack of things getting delayed and we we, we love having you here and we don't want you to be upset and and and, <laughs> and, 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 and we want the and we want and we want our veterans to be paid on time and we and we and we want to equip Ellen to make sure she has the tools that she can serve the veterans without a lot of effort and so, and, and, and I, Lori, I apologize. You told me to give out your phone number. I never oh, would have given it out. It was perfectly fine, but then I had one veteran who called me continuously every 10 minutes wanting to know where his check was, <laughs> which unfortunately, when I stopped answering my phone, that person started calling Karen. And I just said, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> All right. Do we have anything more? I think we're good. All right. That's it. Good. Uh, let's see. I would say thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm I, I, it's like if nothing else, this conversation helped us realize that you, we need, that we can provide you with tools that can help make things go smoother. All right. All right. So, uh, Sunfusions HC. So, hold on. Let me cross that off. So, that is agenda item number six that we have discussed. We will now move back to agenda in order. Agenda item number one, Sun Fusions host community agreement, marijuana cultivation discussing modifications. Okay. Mr. Fromm and Mr. Kaiser Soze, or uh, Giles. Uh, Giles Soze. <laughs> I know. Well. Good evening. That's terrible. I just, I just can't get the, and when I realized that, I just go, now I can't forget it. But now I know your name. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, if you know my name, mm -hmm. it, it works, right? <laughs> All right, so Beth, you have been lead on this. I have been lead on this. So first of all, I apologize that we had to do the uh, agricultural one twice, but in the but we went too fast to go fast instead of going slow to going fast. So now that we've gone slow to go fast, we actually I think have it right. I'm dizzy. <laughs> okay. So fundamentally, uh, there's a number of changes for the uh, agricultural one. Um, uh, Beth. Uh, just for the uh, for the benefit of the audience at home, could you please um, give us some context as to why we feel these before going into the modifications? Sure. Why we're looking to make these modifications? Okay, so most of these are really oh, fall into the category of clarification. Okay, uh, either clarification or taking out extraneous. Um, I would say there were some areas where we had overdefined things, and there were some areas where we had underdefined things. And the hallmark of a good contract is that we get enough of the interpretation out of it that it serves its purpose, right? And make sure that everybody's clear on what the requirements are, mm -hmm. okay? So there were some areas where I think red lines got crossed over and it looked like we had what we had discussed and actually there was just, some of the language was a little, let's call it sloppy, okay? okay. Um, and most of what is in here basically clarifies those 
kind of sloppy areas of the agreement mm -hmm. and puts us in a situation where we could then pretty much boilerplate those requirements into the manufacturing agreement and, and not run afoul of uh, uh, areas of, of potential um, conflict or misinterpretation in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, do you want me to go through the, the specifics? Um, or, or how do you want to do this? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you just summar, can you summarize, I can summarize them? And then so, if we have questions, we can dig into them. Okay. So the first change is that initially the agriculture agreement defined the facility as being outdoor. Um, when the intent was that a good portion of the agriculture would actually be indoor. Um, so in the edits, we went from a strictly tier six outdoor to a tier seven or smaller tier agricultural facility period, regardless of whether it was indoor or outdoor. So that gives that flexibility and enables a certain amount of growth if, if they want to in the future, but it's still a, a relatively small area relative to the size of the property. Is tier seven the next size up from the tier next six? next size up. It's basically 10,000 square feet per tier is roughly what it comes out to be. So it went from being a 40 to 50 to a 50 to 60 max okay. area of cultivation. Mm -hmm. so. so from about an acre to a little more than to like to, an acre to like and a quarter. An acre and a quarter. Okay. Right. So, um, so uh, in section seven relative uh, to like local permitting, it, it just... Um, we just replace the first sentence with um, uh, an indication that um, the company is going to comply with uh, all the state and local laws, right? Um, but new regulations after February 1st wouldn't be considered a breach of this agreement. It doesn't mean that they don't have to abide by those regulations. It just means that they're, they wouldn't be violating their agreement with the select board. Right. It's, it's like if Candace's Control Commission comes up with a new regulation, they abide then, by it. Then they then they even even if they're technically conformant with their HC, if they're not abiding by the new regulation, it's like they're gonna have to deal with the Cannabis Control Commission. No, right? no. State this well, has no purview over. This is written very oh, explicitly. Oh, okay. This my, is very, bad example. So one of the problems is the language originally had some phrases in oh, there within yeah. within oh. there that made it look like we were exempting them from state law, which we have no authority. To Right. Yes. So some of the language rearrangement was around taking out anything that implied that we had any purview over state law, mm -hmm. okay, and or, or really any purview over other board's regulations, mm -hmm. but we have purview over this agreement, so our agreement with them wouldn't necessarily be null and void, regardless of their status against yes. them. They, they would still be subject to those regulations, yes. just their HCA would not be voided by right. failing to comply with those regulations that were not in effect at the time that this HCA was agreed to. Was, was entered into negotiation for, mm -hmm. yes. Um, um, if, I, if I can just go back just quickly yeah. to the, um, the amendment regarding the tier size, there's another amendment that I, I still want there to be confusion about what it means, uh, but it removes the word outdoor. And simply yes. leaves it out. Well, I, did, I did specify that. Oh, you yeah. did say that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. I know yes. I, I wandered around it, but I, I started with okay. the outdoor. Okay. And very good. To the tier side. Yes. Yeah. Do you know the copy of the manufacturing? So, uh, Tom. And then. Uh, Is that a manufacturing? I think so. And then there's there's some clarifying language under Section Eight of Community Concerns that just makes it clear that. We have the option initially just for the town, i.e. this board and the company to resolve disputes over community concerns before it goes any farther, right? So it gives us that opportunity to just act like grown-ups, get in a room together and try to sort it out. Um, and then in the event that we can't resolve the complaints that way, we can open it up to the community in a public hearing. And following that public hearing, we can then uh, require bringing in an independent engineer to help them figure out how to mitigate those issues. Mm -hmm. So that seems like a good progression. You know, it does. Um, and uh, uh, and it's a, an engineer that, and it would be at their expense to to bring in a third party if if necessary. So. Um, and then additional obligations under odor control technology, right? It calls out uh, against a very specific progression 
about how to resolve um, complaints relative to, to odor. Um, and again, calls out the fact that we're not limiting any other board, but um, again, it's not necessarily an explicit breach of this agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and then, let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else here. We've got uh, effective dates. We just clarified like the dates that this is basically a five-year agreement unless we we uh, terminate. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's some clarification in the indemnification where the company will uh, indemnify, uh, kind of defend and hold the town harmless from claims against us for functionally allowing what the state has said is legal for us to do, which is allow marijuana cultivation in our town. Um, and the rest of this, I think is fundamentally the legal language that authorizes this to be part of an amendment and says that the amendment would take precedence in any place where there's a conflict between the original agreement and the amendment. And I think that's pretty much it. All right. So, and like I said, most of that is just clarification of our original intent, mm -hmm. but the language was a little fuzzy. So yeah, it's not clarified. And the intention is that we'll have that um, language in the, and that, and the that newer language will be reflected in the manufacturing agreement. And, and the manufacturing agreement, that's the next item on the agenda, reflects that pretty much in its entirety. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know you all haven't had a lot of time to consume this. I don't know how you want to handle it tonight, but it's, it's fundamentally it's it's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Okay. Would you like five minutes? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right, so. So we can read it while they're going over their copy. Yes. There's a question. Dave? Dave? They asked for five minutes. Can I get my copy back? Recess, or do you want to? No, no, I don't. So what you're saying is. I'll just read it. should be the same thing. Which section? So what you're saying is in the manufacturing, it's already got these edits in the contract. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, the, the, the manufacturing contract reflects the proposed modifications to the cultivation. Yeah. And Nicole has been through both of these mm -hmm. and, and is comfortable with the alignment. Mm -hmm. And then we're. I'm just trying to understand where, so for manufacturing, where are we different versus cultivation? I mean, there'll be some manufacturing well, specific it, well, details. Well, it's the manufacturing specific details are the description of the, um, but then this, this, the manufacturing this establishment. For a yeah. She had a 430 cancellation and she sent me the clean version. So, uh, up here. So, so did she just get it to us today? Yeah, so the one that let me make sure I forwarded the right one. But so just ignore the ones I gave you because they. It might be the wrong ones, ones because that might be why they're talking. Is, it, is that why you guys are. I just gave you the new ones that she just sent me. I just put them. I, just, in I know, but she I might have not forwarded the right one. Oh. I'm just double checking. I'm going to back up and say I, I would like more time. I'm not comfortable yeah. of discussing a contract well, that dropped in my lap at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, so I'd like to at least yeah. deal with the yeah. amendment. I, I'm comfortable dealing with the amendment. The, the amendment's small enough, I can digest that yeah. Yeah. In, in today's meeting. I'm, I'm happy. No worries there. So, because my, because the email that I had forwarded was, uh, oh, you know what, I may have sent the wrong one. So, because I got a note that said at 512, I got the contract that said that she had been through it and that they'd settled the differences. That's weird when I open with the it. With amendments built into it. Okay. Just the Is the one from 512. I may have actually sent you the wrong one, Karen. Okay, so oh. just resend it. She, so I'm gonna Beth may think she had forwarded the wrong one about the for printing. It might be because she printed the wrong, wrong one. She sent the wrong one. Yeah. I'm looking at our clean copy at the moment. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Uh, do you have a different plan? No, um, the copy that I received for my review may not be the one that was intended for discussion tonight. Oh. Um, it was so I think it was the 3.54 p.m. But, and not the 5.12 p.m. But one. Beth, Beth sent a, a, a wrong version to Karen for oh, printing. Oh, so is, print is, okay. is what we think happened. This is what may have yeah, happened. This one. So can I make a motion though that we go ahead and approve the amendment to the agricultural? Right, but no. the five the, the five twelve would be just I can just confirm that was the one that Nicole had said she, that she was sending the clean copies to the town. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately I think I forwarded the wrong one off of the yeah, okay. she forwarded one earlier than that. Okay. Okay. Can you print? Okay. So yeah, yeah. Karen, yeah, so but this. Tom just says he's not really willing to take it up because he hasn't had time to review. I mean, we, we've got enough uh, enough other stuff on the agenda, and I'm uh, just having a drop on my lap today. I'm not ready. How about you, Beth? I'm ready because it's the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. I, mean, I, I just if, I mean, if I can just without talking. It's right. like if I can have a, if I can have a little bit of time to look at it and say, yep, I see the parallelism, but just without a chance to even take take the first look at it. And I, I guess. Since I'm running, since I'm running, I don't know how much. I can still make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> you can, but actually, there is a there is a motion to for the for the board to agree to the amendment, yes. and so let's close that out first. Yes. Do I have a second to best motion second. to agree to the amendment? Sorry. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the any further discussion on the amendment to the already signed host community agreement for cultivation? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of the uh, proposed modification to the cultivation host community agreement, please say aye. 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 All right. So we got that one closed off. I mean, now, from, from my understanding, the only difference between the original cultivation one and this current um, one we get at the current manufacturing one is going to be these these amendments these, these are now in this document correct. so functionally it's the same thing instead of saying cultivation it's yeah. just saying manufacturing there's some there's some fundamentally there's some and let me just pull up yeah. the one there that might i be just manufacturing to. specific differences yeah or the, so. some cultivation specific details may have come out which is what i was expecting it's just i wanted a chance to review it so that but I this could is already see something that's in. been negotiated and discussed between Beth and them um, along with Nicole. Right, so, mm -hmm. so, so this is, it has been vetted by town council, right? Um, and fundamentally, the primary differences between the documents when you consider the amendments is that it gives a description of um, the manufacturing space. Um, And it reiterates all of the standard information regarding the community impact fees, the obligations for notification. Um, it uh, goes through, indicates that uh, You know, the company won't seek a nonprofit status for taxation purposes. If, if I if I could just draw your attention to the the I guess the differences, the cultivation specific or manufacturing specific differences, um, in the cultivation HCA, there was mention of um, a state regulatory requirement regarding um, uh, energy usage by the lighting, and and that was uh, deleted. As simply not applicable to a manufacturing operation. Mm -hmm. um, there was um, most of the water use was left in. Um, however, there was uh, some specific language about um, drip you know, like, like drip irrigation. Yeah, that's that, um, that, that's that a was, that was issue. Needed, right. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't think there were any other cultivation specific language that that was omitted or changed. But that that, that was the gist of the. Um, yeah, of the change. Everything else is, is fundamentally the same. Yes, yes, all the, yeah, and, and just to reiterate that the process that Nicole and I went through was um, we incorporated the amendments in, in this amendment document into the, into the manufacturing HCA. We, we took the cultivation HCA, um, made these minor manufacturing specific changes, and then incorporated these amendments that the board just approved 
into that HCA. Yeah. In anticipation yeah. that the amendments that the amendment would be agreeable to all parties, and therefore the manufacturing HCA should reflect them from it from the beginning. That's correct. And that makes sense. And we're not giving him the full authority to go open this up tomorrow. He still has to go to the CCC See, and go everybody. to the planning board. Yes. <laughs> And it calls out all of the waste and wastewater control requirements, which are pretty significant, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say for, for manufacturing, there's definitely, yeah, that's going to affect manufacturing more than right. cultivation. Yeah. So um, you'll see that under K, there's a very significant level of like, waste and wastewater controls, call outs mostly of state regulations. Um, And then it has pretty much the same odor control um, requirements that are under the, the agricultural. So, and one of the intents was was to align those requirements very closely because since they're going to be co-located, how do you delineate what's coming from the agricultural piece mm -hmm. and what's coming from the manufacturing piece? Yeah. So if you and somehow had different requirements, and in there. the residents don't care where it's coming from; they care that it's coming. Correct. If, or, or, or if it were to come, it would not matter to them which part of which operation it's coming from. Correct. They would care that it's coming. Correct. So. Um, you know, I don't. I really don't see an issue with taking it up, given that we're we were we went into death on the agricultural brief. So, and this is one that Nicole's not like. She's she was able to rectify the the differences that were between the the four o'clock version and the five o'clock version in that hour. Um, so I'm I'm not concerned that she did a line by line in order to do that for us. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of at the point where I'm going to take Nicole's word for it. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, it's like Nicole's, Nicole's word has a lot of weight with me. It, it's just, I'm the guy that reads the privacy policy. I love you it. Must not have very many, you, must, you, must not, you must not have many apps on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know what I'm getting into. I just, I just know. It's like, dear Lord. Though at least at least I don't have at least the uh, insurance companies are not getting my driving habits. No, my insurance companies will never get my driving habits. <laughs> so don't I sign up them. for OnStar. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, that's why I have a thirteen-year-old car. <laughs> yeah, I mean Nicole's saying that. Yeah. We're able to get this after all time just a clean drive. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Um, so I would I would like to make a motion that we approve the 5:11 p.m. draft of the uh, manufacturing HCA. Second. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's discussion going on in my head, so I'm pausing. <laughs> There's a discussion going on in your head. That's I don't know how much more. To, I, mean, well, I know. I know. It's just. It it's just the. It's the. And you've I don't heard, you've heard of belt and suspenders? I don't think I'm going to. I'm belt suspenders and staple something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I just I just like I like to see it and I like to touch it and review it. So. That's why you delegate stuff to people. I know. <laughs> delegate but verify. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I did screw up the first one, so you're right to be mm -hmm. cautious. Mm -hmm. You got it fixed. Get it fixed. But, but I guess it, it, we got it fixed because we had this one coming around. <laughs> True. Next next one, I don't know that. We, well, cool. retail would be the next one. Retail would be the next one. Mm -hmm. The well, money ball. Hopefully that'll, money ball. Hopefully that'll be Jed issue by then. All right. I, do, I don't have any more discussion. So. Oh. You can always abstain or say no. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> no, uh, that's it. I know. I, all right. All in favor, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. So all in favor of agreeing to sign the, commu the manufacturing host community agreement as reviewed by the lawyers and as attested to by Beth and Brad. Um, Oh, sorry, that, that's editing. I'll take strike, strike those from the record, please. I'm, I'm editorializing. For all in favor of, of the board signing the host community agreement for manufacturing, um, 
as presented and represented to the uh, to the board, please say aye. 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 No. <laughs> I, I I have to be true to myself, Mr. Fromm. If I had more time to review To thine own self, be true. Mm -hmm. All right, two will do it. Thank you. <laughs> do we have a clean copy to sign? Um, we, can, I think we can get a yeah. clean copy to sign oh, before it's all over. Can you we'll do it after the meeting. Can you print the, okay. the last one I got from you was 608. Can you send can me another um, one? I no, did. Well, yeah, well, I didn't get it. Get uh, let's see. No, let Hold me on. look uh, for a minute. Yes. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all right. Moving on to agenda item number. Karen, you'll be able to get us a copy of that. Yeah, I'm, I today. have yes. to wait till right, it comes. Maybe, okay. So, agenda item number three, request to use the banquet hall. Maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe this computer is Sun Fusion requests to use the banquet hall on June 12th from 6 to 7 p.m for a public right. hearing involving the, their cannabis business in town. So, and as this is a re this is effectively a reschedule of your prior request? Yeah. Okay, so we already said yes to a different date and he's asking for another Wednesday. Monday. It's a Monday? Is it a Wednesday? Wednesday. I thought it was a Wednesday. Wednesday. You're right. Yeah. It is a Wednesday because town hall is open to eight o'clock on Wednesday and that made the, that, and that's, that's that, and that made everything go, oh, that's easier. That's easier. And that's why you stuck with the Wednesday, I trust. I, so, I took whatever date Karen threw at me and said yes. All right. Yeah, I think, okay, so. I think we told her to give you a Wednesday. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, is it, so, um, so is there a discussion or a motion on this matter? Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the use of the banquet hall from 6 to 7 p.m. on June 12th for a public hearing. Second. All right, um, all in favor of public, of use of the hall as um, moved, please say aye. 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 Tom is surprised. There we go. I know what this one is. All right, and uh, let's see. Since we have advisory here and we do have out of order on the table, I would like to move to number seven and meet with the advi and uh, begin our meeting with advisory. Sure. We can come back to four and five I'll make a motion. later. No, we don't need a motion. Yeah, for that. Yeah. I, I, we've already we've already we already we've already that. voted to move out of go out of order. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, Jeff, I apologize for the delay, but if you would uh, care to um, get yourself into session as we're, needed, we're in session or, uh, session. all right. We'll just Good. wait for the uh, seats to clear Thank and then we'll move over. All right, we will uh, transition. That's correct. Sorry about that. All right, so 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 go ahead, Jeff. So we had as of I guess it was May second, the, the levy, the maximum whatever was fifteen five fourteen oh thirty eight nineteen. Um, and I think that was what you'd given us, Lori, as far as the the limit. I gave you ten. I'm sorry, 10 5 4 4 9 1 8. Yep. Okay, I, I read the wrong line here. That's, okay. that's April 25th, is what we that was the number we're working off of. Okay, that's 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 that I don't have that number explicitly written down anywhere, but that uh jives with what I have is in front this, of me. Is this the one I'm talking about? This, um, is no. it is 10, uh, 5, 4, 4, 9, FY25 budget worksheets one. Is that what you had? Yeah. You had that, right? Yeah, 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 that's what I have. Yeah. I don't have anything further than that. If there's been some adjustments, then I need to be up. Or we need to be updated. Excuse okay. me. We are, um, we are discussing the operating, the fire department operating budget with Chief Martell tonight, and we are discussing some warrant articles with Highway tonight. So, right. not, so stick around. It's like it's like if, if and so if there's nothing else that you want to talk about, we can move on to the other guests. But or at well, least I, I, I wanted to, you hadn't let me finish what I was trying to say. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I wanted to confirm that all of you are working off of the same maximum number of levy limit, the, the 10 5 4 4 9 1 8, or has there been an updated number since the 25th of April? Um, there has been no, uh, speaking for myself, who has who's wound up being the keeper of the spreadsheet, there have been no changes to the numbers that affect the maximum levy um, amount. Okay. And the maximum levy amount plus local receipts plus state aid gives us the maximum the maximum possible budget. So So we're like thirty grand under? No, we're about two grand under. Which one are you looking at? So it looks like total budget's ten five eleven? 
Uh, uh, column K, please, of FI, FI budget, not FI budget two. And you should be on the FY25 budget yes, cap, course. not the FY25. Of course. Okay. okay. They're all yeah. on the side thing now. I'm just and trying to column get, K is I'm the trying to get the top budget. number, and then get the okay. number, and then they can okay. do it. And I'm sorry, 10, 5, 11 is the advisory recommended. They are, their recommendation comes in about 30,000 below ours. So we, there is some divergence. They had a lower COLA and a couple other places. I think they had okay. a slight And our number is 10,543, and you're saying max levy is 10,544? Yes. Okay. Which, which jives with my feel for the numbers. Okay, so to give you our update, we just have a new budget number for ourselves, which is recommended 10513990.60. And we adjusted um, upwards yeah. by 2000 the, the board of health agent uh from the one dollar that you had originally and um so that's the number we came up okay. with so Plus for board of health some... agent what is your total now two thousand okay the, the uh, agent yeah we said yeah. two thousand okay the i the, the select board has recommended is recommending three thousand for that so we're so we're a little divergent but that's okay right but and okay then, just want to make sure that you know that we're not in alignment there no, no. I mean, there's several places, but I think we more or less know where they are. Okay, and, I, I, and Sarah, I'm not concerned with that. One second. Yeah. Sarah, would you please, after this meeting, would you please send me your updated, recommended number so I can incorporate it in? Because I'm not going to try and keep up. No. I want to yeah. focus. I want to focus on the conversation, not okay. the spreadsheet. Thank yeah, you. I'll send you the updated. Okay. Second point is that the whatever you sent on on Monday for our column, the numbers do not coincide with what we have in our column. So okay, then, then that's, that's an a, error on my got, part. We've got to scrub it somehow. Okay, um, I, will, uh, I will take updated numbers from Sarah, and then I will, and then after this meeting, I will share updated numbers that include any changes that we agree to on our column, and I will roll in any uh, numbers from Sarah based right. on what you send us after you close your meeting. Right. I mean that. Okay. That's so and then and we'll we'll fix that error. I do have one question regarding the um, total amount to be raised number or or whatever. Yeah. The We're maximum using. budget number. Yeah. That, yeah. So when we did the police station, we did a debt exclusion. Yes. It's it's and, factored in. Okay, and, and we, okay, that's what I was going to ask. Yes. I just wanted to make sure that when we refinance so into the longer term, when you note. refinance, you clumped all of your loans together. So I so you do ratio out, out you ratio out the amount that is just solely for the police station interest and principal, and the rest of it just. I, I just wanted to make certain yeah. that that was that that didn't get lost in the shuffle. So that we have as. 40, my printing is really small, 45, for okay. next year. Okay, so that's, that portion of it is fundamentally. It's in there, okay. yes. The one thing Just to check keep it. in mind for you guys' budget, because you said you're at 10, 5, 4, 3, the state, state aid members are not finalized yet. So right. my mm -hmm. 10, 5, 4, 4 is the current, includes the current state numbers. So you want to make sure you give yourselves like because I'm told that number is, yeah, I, I believe when I went to the state numbers, there was the, there's the house and the governor's numbers that have been published, and I took the set of numbers that was less advantageous to us. The numbers that are in the 10, 5, 4, 4 are the house ways and means, which are actually slightly lower than the governor's, which are what's in the numbers I have right now. The Senate could go either way. Yeah, but I, of the two numbers, I decided to base our projections on the more conservative assumption. That way, surprises on the upside are much easier to deal with. Yes. Okay, but I, I but I will take the guidance that we may want to put a little more headroom in there. Just, I'd say about twenty grand. That's what the the first two changed about twenty. So okay. I give yourselves like twenty of wiggle room. Okay. Um, thank you. That's well, good to know. Okay. Second point, um, we just approved our last meeting's minutes where we voted all of the warrant articles as we had them in the first round, so the numbering might be off. But okay. I believe we were in agreement with all of your recommendations. We still didn't have the total numbers, but the ones that we uh, did not recommend were the two, um, the, the, uh, the tractor thing and the, um, whatever the resale, 
Yeah, and those I told you guys before, there was probably going to be 3 2 against, and that's where it Turn turned out. And then we did recommend the gas monitoring okay. system 3 2. Okay. Everything else so, is. So you recommended against the purchase of the new backhoe and against the trade in of the existing yes. one? Yes. Okay. And then, again, I don't know if the article numbers are the same in your new okay. warrant. They're not the same. No. But I wanted to give this to Karen so at least she'd have some a working, so we have, make sure we get our recommendations into the warrant book this year. And I asked her also for us to be able to review it before it goes to publication so that we know. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's possible or not, but I would like that since we well, were totally yeah. dropped off last year, we okay. didn't have any recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. Karen? Yeah, thank you too. Yes, yes, I told them we we'll definitely will have them. Yes. So there's one issue we had to label the gas buddy system, whatever you call it. 15A, and that's what's reproved as 15A, which is not 16. So there's three other more articles on it that weren't on the original that we hadn't voted on yet. Right. right. So, so we would like to run. Ones. So again, all the numbers that we have from 15A down are not the mm -hmm. articles as the warrant we saw this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So either we've got to revote on the new warrant articles, or if Karen can get it. I Karen did send a yes, and I did. Um, they're not the same as the ones I sent you. The one we got this afternoon, yeah, yeah. that's the uh, that's the latest one. Yes, right. Yes. And that showed that our 15A, because it was had been um, deleted. Yeah. The April 16th version of the warrant. Yeah, yeah. And now it's Article 16 in this so May first version. Okay. And then obviously you got new 33, 35, 33, 34, 35, which weren't in the April 16th report. So we just need to. So I'd like to turn this over to Karen, and then as far as if you decide to vote on any warrant articles tonight, we would like to vote, the ones we haven't already voted on, we'd like to vote for those also, and sort of go along in sequence with you. Um, so, are there any questions? Or The other question we had um, was on articles, the original articles 33 and 34, so the five ones from the April 16th. Oh, the donation one? 33 and 34 were the... Um, uh, uh, hold on one second. Karen? Yeah. Um, just uh, for future reference, the, uh, the zero, zero numbers were always intended to be immutable, and new articles should be added to the end of the document until we do the final renumber. Oh, okay. All that, right. that way, we, the numbers, when we talk about an article, it always has the same number, and then we close, gotcha. when we close okay. discussion. Okay. It, then the numbers, there's one final renumbering, and there's only one time where the numbers change. Yeah, I didn't know Okay, so if okay. anything else gets added, please add it to the end. We'll yeah. reorder it as needed later. Okay. okay. Prefer not to reorder all the warrant articles if we don't have to. So. Mm -hmm. that, yep, I understand. Uh, yeah, and, and those those new warrant articles were us mm, making changes in the budget and taking some project work out of the operating budget and putting them into uh, free cash. Well, there's actually three different articles we had questions about. One was on the original Article 18, which is for to raise appropriate transfer of so all to remove hazardous trees. And the reason we, want, we decided to have that conversation because it was asking 55000 And I think I think we heard from you, Tom, at the meeting that um, even though that account hadn't been fully spent, that it was fully, uh, it was all just pending bills, if you will. Um, no, no, it yeah. wasn't that it was no. cutting bills that he had, that we still had plenty of cutting season left at the end of the year. Yeah, that, 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 that there was lot. work in the pipeline that that's would amazing. utilize the money, but it had not, it had not, it okay, had not so been built. Okay. So that's, I, I apologize if I wasn't clear on that. Okay, point. no, well, no, it, yeah, if it's in the works, that continually yeah. tells me it's just mm -hmm. in the works. And it's just, so again, the concern from the um, uh, committee was that. It looked like you had a bunch of money still in that account, and we're getting mm -hmm. 55 grand more. But it sounds like, from this conversation, all that money's to be spent properly. Yeah. I think so that, you need that, that was more just a um, communication error. To yeah. 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 our members, yeah. and I would to yeah. our and members, to not. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm not sure I would. We were told. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would not commit to the warrant to the that the existing yeah. money in the warrant article being fully spent down by the end of the year. I expect we'll get a good chunk of it spent, yeah. spent down. And I'm good. Okay. Yeah. So, so the other two that we had, conversation just to move this along. Yeah. Uh, the old 33 and 34, which were about transferring the balance of a couple of different funds from the 350th uh, um, a committee, whatever it's called, um, back to. This didn't say where it was going to go back to. I think that was the question. Which, which one? Um, just, okay. Um, All right. So it's current in, current article thirty seven. Seven. Yeah, it's thirty seven. Thirty eight. Yeah, and that's no thirty seven. And so, 
our our discussion was that we had allocated uh, let's see. 35,000. No, 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 no. That's uh, what I'm saying is we allocate of the $16,000 remaining in the account. Right, right, right. We were looking to do, hold on, I got to call up. There's warrant articles. <laughs> and it's a transfer. Yeah, we were going to okay that we were go that for paying that we were going to use some of the money left over from the 350th celebration in that warrant article account, and we we're going to allocate it to pay for warrant article number three prior year bills. Otherwise, that's typically done with free cash. So that way, that reduces so. So it's not getting then, into your free cash. Right? Yeah, and that okay, that well, leaves free cash just, available for else. It's like and and the intention was because if we just. If we don't do something with the money, the purpose of the as I understand it, the purpose of the account has been met. So any leftover money will be swept and go into next year's free cash. And we're just trying to say, well, don't go to free cash. We'll we'll use it now. Okay. It just thirty-seven dollars. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You have to repurpose it for a new article, not to pay prior to your bills. It no, no, no. Well, we would. It's an article with a, a new special purpose. Yeah, yeah. We we would we would we would transfer it to fund warrant article number three, which is for. You're not. You can't transfer an oh. article like a okay. balance. You're oh. either calling the article something new, like it's no longer going to be the three hundred and fiftieth. It's going to be. You know, it's going into the road improvement account. It's going no, into no, no, no. something else. He's talking about. Uh, no, I get what no, you're saying. Oh. You can't just say, I'm going to use the money left in this article to now pay prior to your bills. You can't do that. Okay, so we, what we, what do we, we have to, do we have to re, do we have to. You have to give it a new special home. Okay, so we have to. Or let it go to free cash. Okay, so effectively, we can let all the money go to free cash, or we can redesignate a new purpose for the existing, for the remaining money. As a new warrant article. Yep. Okay. Or you can put it all in stabilization. I mean, yeah. you can transfer it all there too. You can do. Yes, but you can't start divvying it up into. I'm going to pay this article and some of this article. It just has to all go to one home. Okay. Let's go to a single purpose. Okay. Is yes. the simplest way just to go back to stabilization then? Um, we well, well, we, it didn't more. come from stabilization. No. It came from free cash in a prior year, right. and so yeah, it was a prior year free cash. But I think you so put it into free cash. So if you vote for it to go into free cash, it goes into next year's free cash. You wouldn't right? actually vote for it. You just release it. Right, right. 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 it, right. it would be simpler just to not do anything, and it would automatically release into free cash. So we well, well, what we could do, though, it, since it came from free cash previously, right, to, to fund an article, and how much is left? about 16, I think it's 16 to 16 Could we do two articles relative to the elevator, one that is from the 350th and one that's the balance? Well, I, the elevator is different. there is a, a, you have well, another one in there for the elevator yeah. for the balance of the chair left. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we could right. do so is we lower that article down. No, because the the effectively that's that's repurposing the chairlift. That, that needs chair that needs to be from what Lori said. That article has to that with right. has to take the existing chairlift account and repurpose it to the elevator. Right. But what I'm what I'm could, saying is that could we merge? Could Lori? Could we merge two end of life articles into a single new article and oh, repurpose? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Kind of what I was, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. so instead yeah. of having 72 for the elevator, now you have like 88. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you but, have a, a lot. I thought we were putting extra free cash on top of what we had from the There's no article you, for that. I think you were intending to, but there was no other yeah, the, free cash yeah. article for the elevator. Yeah. The, art, the article for that never got into the document. And that was one of the things I called out when I sent, when I sent the updated document out earlier this week. Right. I said there is no article for that purpose in there. I went because I went through and I said, and I looked at every article on the free cash tracking sheet, yeah. and I went through every article in the warrant book, and I lined them up and I split them into these are the free cash articles, these are the transfer articles, here's the article for the backhoe. Yeah, there's currently just a single article for the elevator. Yeah. And so yeah. we can. So we can we can correct that, or not correct that. We can change that and put that article in if we need if we feel we need to. Did we? Is there? Uh, 
I guess my question would be, so how much did you say was there? Again? 16, yeah. Yeah. A little over 16,000. If we could just change the new computer acquisition to be 16.2, because that's a rough number estimate anyway. Oh, for the um, inter yeah. uh, for the website. Yeah, yeah. And I just think cover that. Just cover it instead of having it be 15, have it be 16.2, whatever the balance is of that account. Yeah, I think transfer I think, it to technology, and that that take that burden off of this year's yeah. free cash. Yeah, new computer repair uh, computer repair replace account. Well, we have it on the Warren article as a new computer acquisition and migrate town website to a new service provider. So what that would do is give us the just call give it technology us, upgrades. Yeah, just it call it a little easier. Yeah, just call it technology yeah. upgrades, mm -hmm. and and that way, since everything always costs more than you expect it to, that gives us just a little bit of buffer for mm -hmm. accomplishing those tasks. There's actually three separate articles, I think five, five, yeah. and five. Yeah. Is that yeah. Karen, our discussion was it was going to be one article. It has, it and has we to would be use one. it for oh, all well, we have to, we have to oh, use right. it to fund one article. What, what okay. number is that, Beth? I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, Jeff, the, to answer your question, uh, the board's intention was that articles, what you see as articles 0034, 0035, and 0036, would be a single $15,000 article for technology purposes. This was, this, these three separate articles was not what the board discussed last week, and so this is a, this is a clerical error. Okay, so and so and so we're we're going to we, and we'll address that and then once we address that then you can follow on and decide how you want to what recommendation you want to make against a single Are article. Are you going to do it tonight or something? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I would we'll, like we'll to, wait for your yes. calling. Yes. I would like to. I would like to get it done tonight because I'd like to close this out. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So we'll close those, this out before the election. Those were the only other ones, and then the the only other question we had as a committee was. There were some other articles that appeared at the back end of the uh, whatever was sent out today, uh, and I believe it was a citizen petition uh, or a yeah. warrant on the on the longevity factor. Yeah, was that citizen or was that something that you decided to put in? Citizen not? petition. Citizen petition. If it's in, if it's in the back, it's a citizen petition. Yeah, and it talks it, and it definitely changes our conversation from last time back, where it says statements will be paid at the end of. Fiscal for all employees. It yeah. doesn't say it's at the option of select board. Huh? It Correct. says it will be paid, which means now everyone will get one of these every year, which is, if that's what everyone wants, that's fine, but that's what this says. Though. Yeah. I, I think it's yeah, incumbent on us to help people understand what that does to the budget. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because it doesn't specify a funding right. source, but it's gonna, that would have to be the operating budget. Right. So, so, yeah. my, so my, it would definitely have to be the operating budget based on our expert guidance. Yeah. So my, my question is, normally the advisory committee does not vote on citizen petitions. Um, is there any flexibility? Because on this one, we would definitely want to vote. But I don't I would, know if it's possible. I would say the advisory committee is charged with um, uh, it, advising it on, on financial articles. And... Typically, the citizen petitions are not overtly financial, and so the advisory committee, in, when I was on the advisory committee, we didn't always get into them. Um, I would say that um, given the, the impact of this, on, given that it is a fairly explicit budgetary one, I would have no problem with the advisory committee making okay. uh, taking a vote on it. Um, and does anyone else on the, does anyone else like the board have a different opinion? No. All right, because I, I don't. I, okay, because if the board has a different will, then I don't want to just have. So we have to be the one to speak first. So, yeah, Lori, yes. Can I ask a question about Article 33? I guess the fire alarm system for eighty thousand dollars. Yes. And, um, is the fire alarm system a lot of money? Because you guys funded the fire alarm system via ARPA funds a while ago, and you haven't spent that money. That was okay. money for a fire alarm system for seventy thousand dollars. You approved at the August twenty fourth meeting. It was an ARPA allocation. Okay. I thought that was the design or something like that. Something no, I, I, there was there was a contract we had to sign for the design, and that was I think fifteen or sixteen thousand. Well, no, there was eighteen thousand for the design for the police station. Okay, maybe I'm thinking. Yeah, of that. that was for the But I mean, but I believe, but I believe the fire alarm system has been designed. Maybe we paid a penny for it 
Yeah. Okay, that, has, that hasn't been designed. Yeah. But if we're asking, okay, then it seems to me that then maybe the, okay. this is where the, the ARPA fund is, um, so has gone so. So, that I, may have been better. So, so who asked you to get the fire alarm system on the board? I believe Kelly put that on. Hey, Chief. <laughs> has anybody been in communication with you about fire alarm system for the town hall? These three. That was probably Kelly who was working it. She yeah. was working it. Yeah. She lost track. Of it. Mm -hmm. She lost track of the fact that we have the arm tonight. Probably. So. So I'm wondering if you guys didn't know you had that money already allocated, or if you would. No, we didn't know that we had that money allocated. That money. I thought that else. we we had so much confusion over. Allocation and reallocation of ARPA funds. Do we have? Do you have a spreadsheet laid out? Can I get a copy? Yeah, right? I want a copy too. Mm -hmm. Make it three. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point you sent it to us, but I just want to. Well, this one I updated yesterday, so. That so was, well, there you go. Well, I yeah, like that. I know, I know there's been updated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. And so that's, that's it for now. Oh, there's some other ones that I was in here. Oh yeah, once it fixes it up. Oh, goodness. All right, so we have to look at All right, so one okay. change is that the um, Article 3 is going to switch to being funded by free cash <coughs> and not by a transfer from so another article. Right, um, but that'll free us up a bunch of free cash oh, to pay for that. If, well, I wonder what yes. Because if anything, if, Thank you. if Kelly was thinking it's going to be 80 and not 70 and we don't have quotes yet on the, on the fire system, would it be advisable to leave it on there for another 10 grand just so that in case the ARPA money is not enough? Or do we have some buffer in our ARPA money if it was? You've got 14,897 left in ARPA that's okay. unallocated. But, when does but that I was also. You yeah. have to allocate everything by December 31st. Of this year. Yes. Of this year, yeah. then you have yeah. two yeah. years yeah. to spend yeah. that. Yes. Okay. One thing I remember now, if we allocate it but then have to reallocate it to something, where does that leave us? Out of luck. And out of luck. these articles, that's why I'm telling all my towns allocate it and spend it by December 31st because once you allocate it by December 31st, I have to report to you. I'll look, I'll try to look. So December 31st, I'll try to look. Yeah, I'll look. I'll try to 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 look. i for the insulation, more specifically. And so we can, what it may, so it may make sense to put some free cash aside against that, against the, against the uh, possible more expenditures. And we have that reserve and that will free up the, uh, the additional um, ARPA money for, for use sooner. Because what I'm trying to do is like I'm, I'm, I'm taking Lori's advice to allocate and spend the ARPA you know money what, sooner and, so and, and, and longer term set aside free cash. And so spend the ARPA money soon, free cash longer term, so that the ARPA money is um, not encumbered at the end of the calendar year. 16. So what you could do is just leave the fire alarm alone on the warrant for the 80. Rescind your vote for the 70,000 that you've allocated towards mm -hmm. the fire alarm in ARPA, and that frees it up for the police station because you only have to allocate that based on a vote of the select board, and then you have that money available for the police station. Yeah, actually, it's that only on there for 18,000, <coughs> which is the, the Dario contract. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, town hall ballroom renovation. Mm -hmm. So there was 100,000 allocated, but only. Fifty-seven thousand. Has been spent so far. Fifty-seven thousand has been spent. So there's still forty-two thousand for the town hall that's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, and the work on that room has been done. I didn't know where the project stood, so I didn't know if that is there considered was, complete or if you have more phases of that. The only thing I, I believe it was complete. The only thing I knew about was something that, and I don't even know where it stands now. Was the hallway. Going up, uh, like the top of the stairs. Right. You're supposed to be painting at the top of the stairs. So realistically, you could, once you confirm the painting, and we pay for that, then you'll be able to rescind the rest of that allocation because you still have forty-two thousand remaining there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I would. My opinion was I was going to wait till the new TA came in to let him take mm -hmm. lead in charge on that. Yeah. 
Well, just so you know, um, we did receive an estimate to, to repaint the hallway. I sent it on to the um, Town Hall Improvement to Al and asked him if he was aware of that, and he, he said thank you, and he didn't say anything else, so I assume they are looking at it too, but we did get an estimate. And we, and we can always reallocate any of that, right? Any so if, okay, so, that, you can keep so whatever we decide with the website, if we end up not having enough money there for some odd reason, we could always reallocate. Yeah. And so 70 for the fuck. Oh, we haven't used any of the 70 for the. And we're scratching the mass works and the culvert project. You already did, so you listed okay. those already. Mm -hmm. okay. I so, just need that stuff on there so you can see what you did allocate and what you were sending. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Lori, what happens if, uh, as using hypothetical numbers, um, what happens if we allocated $80,000 for the police station project, um, and the project doesn't finish until after the end of the year, and the project comes in at $70,000, so there's $10,000 unallocated. We're, we're out of luck. We, we lose the money. You're technically considered to be out of luck, because okay. you have another two years to spend more if you're just calling it the police station project. Okay. If there's more stuff. Depending on how you define it. Exactly, so, because you're, you're the ones allocating the money. Yeah. So fundamentally, the ARPA money should be stuff that is going to be expended sooner, yes. so that and the free cash can be stuff later. Uh, conversely, ARPA money is under the control of the select board, whereas free cash um, is a town is town is a town meeting matter. From what they've explained to us so far, is you're supposed to allocate by December thirty first. But we're not going to actually have to report your allocations until next April 30th. Mm -hmm. So they're giving us like four months of wiggle room in between <laughs> when you're supposed to allocate finally mm -hmm. and when we're actually going to report your final yeah. allocation. And when they're going to hold us to it. So is our actual balance the 130? Um, the one you have remaining? Yeah. Yeah, the 130 is okay. good. Is what's un uh, uncommitted is the 14 yeah. and, and right. unexpended well, is the 130. Okay. Yeah, so well, actually, it'd be 130 the, plus the 14. It's like 130 the, plus the 14. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it's 144, 145. Okay. Feel better about that. Yeah, I mean, but that was. I thought we literally only had 14,000 left of our fund, and I was like, where did it go? All right, so we have a police station roof. I'm sorry, we police station ins police station insulation, yeah. town hall fire alarm. Yeah. Need to get yeah. done. The and Green Street. Those things need to be funded. My understanding of Green Street is that it was a uh, the contract the, the bids came in above contract above grant. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. There was fifty four thousand was the contingency that was never in the grant. Mm-hmm. And we are, were on the hook for it the whole time, mm -hmm. and we never budgeted for it. Okay. And Dennis brought up a good point. Like, how did that happen? Yeah. How did the contract get signed? Because, right. it was, because it was on the town meeting warrant last year when we were supposed to allocate the funds, and for whatever reason, we passed over it. Oh. But it was always considered oh, a we, contingency. We, we, we signed it because we signed the contract that was on the warrant, and then we took it off the warrant. So we'll switch oh, so, yeah. That's um. That's I, that, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad on us. We yeah. but, but let's make sure. Let's get it fixed. <laughs> but like I said, for that one, I, I would I would highly suggest putting it into the road improvement account. Mm -hmm. I like uh, that idea. If we can use Chapter ninety funds, uh, if at all possible, then we can reallocate that to a different road. Mm -hmm. Instead of not, it just being Green Street, we're not committed to Green Street. Yeah. Yes. So I, I, I co-signed that idea. I like that flexibility. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to, it's like, we're probably going to have to spend that money. We're going to spend it on a road regardless. Yeah, but I mean, and if we don't, well, the chapter 90 money goes to Green Street or goes to somewhere else. Right, it all gets spent. Yeah, and it all needs to get done. All right, so, so it's going to be merged now, with you're looking, just, us, you're, you're looking at that conversation like it's... Well, no, I'm just thinking through, I was talking to Jeff that, all the warrants are going to be rejiggered now, no matter what we do, right? You've taken two warrants and made one, right? Well, the, 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 num the numbering will change again. Yes. <laughs> but the numbers, are, the dollars are the same. Well, uh, the they dollars. could change also. Or at least, the, 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 well, I, I hope not. 
but we're having that discussion here well, with the only you place dollars change are, are the new three, 5,000 or 15 grand. Yeah. That's the only new thing I saw. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, yeah, I mean, my, uh, this is just my stream of consciousness thought is if we, we know what we, we voted and if the numbers are, are off, and we'll set up to blanket revote saying we agree with whatever. <laughs> You know, the, uh, I, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's just I don't want to go back and revote forty-seven different articles after we've already voted most of them. Well, I would say if, if the number changes, your vote for the substance of the article transfers over. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The article, as long as the dollars don't change, the article number, yeah. it shouldn't go. I mean, I, I know just fundamental philosophy. I think um, the advisory committee, for whatever reason. Is, is against the, the backhoe thing and is for everything else. And that's that's more or less, no matter what happens to the numbers or the numbering of the Warren articles. So. And just to be clear, the, the backhoe thing is simply that, you know, some members think more homework should have been done around the numbers and, you know, why have that much if it's really not that So they're not enough. questioning that. And I know this guy, yeah. I know that guy, people cheap and why can't you fix it, blah, 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 blah. Oh. So yeah. that's, that's all that. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like they think it's maybe twenty thousand high, and the key is for us when we put a warrant article on there is to make so sure that back, yeah. we don't have to go back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. I was making sure I wasn't missing something. But that's, that's why we have a democracy. <laughs> All right, so All right. we have um, seven members or nine members. It could be five, four, the other way. Who knows? So. Yeah. So, so for Green Street, okay, looks like that was already changed. Where twenty was. That's merged into 15. Article 15. And yeah, that's the, what Larry uh, said. Okay, so what I will do, yeah, what I would like is, um, that to me is kind of easy and clean to approve. So I will take a motion to, uh, to approve the um, yeah. transfer of the $54,000 from the Green Street article um, and making it to increase the amount sent over to road reconstruction. Okay, so I'll make a motion to um, remove the article previously numbered 20 uh, with the $54,000 for Green Street and apply that $54,000 to Article 15, uh, road reconstruction, road construction and reconstruction account for a total of 79, a recommended amount of $79,000 to be the motion for that uh, article. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor of that change, please say aye. 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 So you give us a couple of minutes, we'll, we'll vote that. Too. Yep. Uh, we'll motion motion uh, approve article, the new article 15, the second. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Mr. All right, now that leaves us, okay, so the, so the Green Street funding is taken care of. We have, in free cash, we have Town Hall Fire Alarm, and we have Engineering for Police Station. So, do we want to put some free cash to those? We have, in, in, uh, we have uh, $18,740 for the Engineering of the Police Station Installation. We do not have, we have not allocated any money for funding the actual work. Right. But we've paid the engineer to spec it out right. and to run the bid process. And so we have, so we have all that. So, but, we want so but going ahead, we're going, to, we're going to need to, it's like, if we want to do the project in this coming year, we're going to have to put some money on the table for it. And that could be free cash, or that could be a rejigging, uh, that could be allocating um, unexpended ARPA money. Because we do have $130,000 that is unex, well, Allocated but unexpended. Yes. Still have double fire alarm. Uh, yes. Uh, we have we have seventy thousand allocated to fire alarm, and then we've got forty two, and we got we got about forty two thousand on allocated to the to the uh, ballroom renovation. That's really. You're gonna paint the hallway first, so you still have to spend a little bit of forty two. Yeah. So I would say maybe thirty five thousand. It's like I'll budget. I'll, I'll I'll pencil in thirty five thousand. It wasn't. It, it was short under ten grand. I want to say with the hallway. I it, I want to say the bid was small. Right. Yeah. So thirty five and the the almost fifteen remaining. So we've got about fifty thousand dollars of ARPA money that should be allocable. Fourteen thousand is clean. The remaining 
$35,000 is likely clean. And then you could either take the 70 from that fire alarm money or take the 80 out of the warrant. Right. You gotta dump one of those fire alarm mm -hmm. articles, however you wanna call it. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm inclined to move the police station into ARPA money and do town hall on, and do the, do the fire alarm on free cash. But I'm not married to that position. Yeah, I'm not married either. Do we have true estimates on the, on the uh, insulation? I do not believe we do. No, we don't. Which article is it, sir? Um, this is, we are not talking about an article. We I are talking about a no need, and we're talking, we're identifying we how we're going, how we think we use the township company, funded. They were gonna and there may be, there, there may be an article. Wasn't there an article before? Um, on what? On the police station? No. No, no I so don't. We have police station engineering on the ARPA money. Okay. And then we also have, and then we have town hall fire system. We That's had seventy thousand. The system. town hall fire system. We had allocated seventy thousand dollars of ARPA money, and then somehow it wound up on the warrant yeah. as, as an eighty thousand dollars. Eighty thousand more. And the old right. article thirty-two. Yeah. That's and what. And the, but it, it's not in the new articles. It it is actually. Oh, is it? Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it has not come it's out. Article yet. thirty-three actually. And so what we're trying to figure out is do we leave it on the article as Article 33 under the new draft? Oh, or do we leave it on the ARPA money? And we're thinking because we don't have a, another good source and we really need to do the fire or the police station insulation sooner rather than later, but we don't have a set number yet because the engineering that's going on right now is what's going to get us the accurate thing to go out to bid spot. To, to go out to bid with. So um, rather than put something that's half baked in front of the town meeting for the police station or for the police station insulation, it, it would make more sense to to do the town hall fire alarms that we have at least a pretty decent line of sight on what the cost is going to be, and leave that ARPA money free to go do the insulation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just, just, oh, because we had we had uh, approved that. Yeah. Yeah. So, the fire alarm. Yeah, so I think we, if we leave it if we leave it in place, we're we're better off. We leave it on the warrant. Okay. Leave I'm it on the warrant so we can revote the ARPA money. Okay. Should Once we re should we revote the ARPA money now? No, it's no. not on our agenda. Good point. All right. <laughs> we can talk about it yes. in the context of we're doing okay. the financial planning about the funding sources for the yes. purposes of the warrant. Yes. But we can only actually make that decision at yeah. a future date it has to that decision has to be on the agenda that good good point thank you for uh thank you for keeping 16. us safe on the safe and narrow um, i will try all right all right so pd insulation will be arpa and town hall fire alarm will be i'll make a motion to extend the meeting past 8.15 with regrets. Second. All right, all, all in favor of extending the meeting past 8.15, please say aye. 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 All right. <laughs> so that means that the, okay, so the, so current article number 33 is staying on the board. So now that brings us, so I'd like to turn our attention to 34, 35, and 36. And I would like a, uh, I don't know, the, I think we can get away without a vote and just re, reaffirm our, uh, so our desire I, for this so to have been one warrant article. Yeah, I don't know, how, how did this get split out in the first place? It was me, I did I don't it, know. because when I talked to Jacob and it, it sounded like it was three separate things, so. No, we had that yeah. conversation okay. very explicitly during the meeting. All right. That this that we needed to aggregate it so that if the cost on one thing happened to go over a little or under a little, that it was all one technology budget. So I think what we're going to be doing is technology upgrades is to do raise an appropriate transfer borrow some money for for technology upgrades, right, or take any action there too. So 34 through 36 get consolidated into yeah. one. Okay. Right, and the motion will be to was it a transfer from the or reallocation? You're going to dump 34 through 36, you're going to get rid of all those, and now 37 
is just going to say ah there we go to oh, reallocate oh, it to okay. to to technology, technology upgrades okay yeah, i'm sorry i missed that piece so but i forgot that we had that other article so we're just going to reallocate that amount the technology upgrades and it's going to be in the right okay. neighborhood oh yeah yeah okay so so there that way we have one landing place for previously so allocated. 16 grand in there now for technology yeah. Right. Right. Which is a little more than we needed, but that's kind of well. We don't know. Well, no, no. It's a little more than we well. It's a little more than we thought we needed. Right. But it provides a good home for that money. Right. And we will eventually, we we will eventually use our, that money if, if we need to. If, well, if it's not enough for technology upgrades, we can always go to exactly. ARPA and get the rest from ARPA. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think we can do technology upgrades on ARPA. But what? But what it does put is. Oh, can you really? Anything. Pretty much. Any governmental expenses mm -hmm. being claimed right Right, any, right. anything. Oh. Anything. You Got it. pay payroll if you really want to. Yeah. You can literally pay anything. Yeah, okay. Okay, so. Did you catch what so we right. what yes. we discussed? We voted yes. Whatever you, just, you guys you did, we voted yes. yes. You just want to uh, take the money left over on the three fiftieth into technology. So yep. Right. And yep. Uh, what are our and current articles thirty four, thirty five, and thirty six are going away they because go the repurposing of, of thirty seven yeah. achieves the same result. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure we're on the same page? Yes. Yeah. So thirty seven will become thirty four, and yeah. all those other ones. And all the other ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Um, do we have an anticipated start date for a county board meeting? Um, if so, um, it's on the agenda, so we yeah. can talk yeah. about it as a sidebar. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, he could pretty much start? He, like I was trying to target a, a 15th of May start date. So okay. when we talk about the contract, unless it's like, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to try to when we have that conversation, yeah. just get dispensation. Only because I've been holding off on the website stuff. Yeah. Thinking he's going to come in because yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. Start and then transition. I'd rather work yeah. with him. So mm -hmm. he, he's willing to start like the 15th. Okay. I just, we just need to get. Yeah. We I, need to. I, I, basically, our deal. I, yeah. I basically need your permission to just hammer right. out the details on the contract. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, with okay and. For the uh, for, for the um, and I apologize uh, for to observe form. Could someone open the warrant? Yeah. Well, there's one more thing on the warrant. <laughs> yeah. But can I get a vote to open the warrant because we closed the warrant last week. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to open the warrant. Second. All right. Thank you. All in favor of opening the warrant, please say aye. 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 All right. And and, and now all, all those changes retroactively are, are brought into <laughs> now that the warrant has been opened. So that we just, just got to make sure it's the forms. I'm sorry, Tim. Thank you for letting me take care of that. No, no, no worries. No worries. I, I just wanted to have, have that conversation about the new article 49 about the longevity. Uh, sure. Just to make sure we're all mm -hmm. we'll does, be now, work from last does the week versus work. Does the art well? Does the the article well? The article doesn't state a funding source, but according to uh, Lori, the wording indicates that it will have to be operating budget. So fundamentally, we're going to have to understand, um, Lori, if the operating budget, I'm going to come up with num I'm going to put some example numbers. Say we're ten ten thousand dollars below the maximum uh, uh, where our levy limit would allow us to be. Our maximum levy, excuse me. And the cost of this article is twenty thousand dollars, and the town. Of, uh, they can't, can't fund it. So effectively, the levy limit will prevent the funding of yes. this. So okay, that, that, and and that's fine. I just want to understand what would happen because those two things conflict, and I want to know what controls. Yeah. So a citizens' petition is supposed to be brought forth with funding. So we had a long discussion about this when the town administrator first came up as a citizen petition five years ago, mm -hmm. the person presenting the citizen's petition is supposed to present a funding source with their article when they make their motion, um, and they can't force the town to vote for something without a funding source. So oh, was the, the petition invalid? What was that? Sounds like the petition is then is invalid. They, we have to accept any citizen's petition, yeah. whether or not they present a funding source. They can present a funding source on the floor, um, but it has to be validated. Mm -hmm. And and the and this has a subordinate claim on the t the fund the funding versus everything else because of the way it is. It's a, it sounds like so. Best practice says that longevity and it being a payroll should be coming out of the operating budget. Yes, it's not governed by mass general law. That it has to be out of your operating budget. They could attempt to say that it should be coming out of stabilization because we have the funds. 
it's mm-hmm. foolish. No, I'll, um, they get that. To put the town in a any, terrible position mm-hmm. um, because any type of payroll or expense that is would be considered a yearly expense, like this one is positioned to be, should be coming strictly out of their operating budget, on, out of the tax levy. Yes, because in last year we, were, I believe, we funded the uh, the bonus, the longevity bonus, out of free cash because it was optional. Yes. And, but now, but because this article makes it mandatory, that uh, basically says that it really ought to be funded from yeah. the operating budget. You do not pay recurring not mandatory expenses from free cash. So just a follow up on Tom's question, Lori. Um, so if indeed, as you said, you know. We're this art article now exceeds the levy limit. Um, sounds like either stabilization or you'd have to have an override for it, right? No. How else would you no, you can't, the, a citizen position can't force an override. Okay. Um, for two reasons. First, an override would have to be presented to the town in the form of an article mm-hmm. prior. It can't just be said yeah. in a motion. Okay. Um, and I mean, they could attempt to vote out of stabilization. But then you have, have to give two thirds time. Yeah, and, and that's politically difficult. Um, and then and to and it can't be paid out of stabilization without an explicit vote to authorize the release of and money from stabilization, which is a two thirds vote. And, and they could they could they could roll the dice and do it as raising appropriate, but then it wouldn't necessarily be anything you could finalize until we got the state numbers in from from uh, uh, the cherry sheets, and if they didn't, there wasn't enough money, then it would get cut. And correct? and the ab- and it would be an absolute shit show if the they, let's say it costs thirty thousand dollars, and there's twenty thousand dollars worth of headroom. How does the twenty thousand dollars get carved up and spread among the people? Well, it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, we'd have to cut the whole article. Yeah. It would be the last one voted, and the article would have to be unfunded. Okay, it couldn't. It, it, it wouldn't be partially funded. It's like okay. No. Oh, that. So I like that. Nice and clean. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, so my, my next question, follow on, is who has the list of what this would accumulate for an ex- annual expense? Is? Do you have that or so Kelly have that? Or? At town meeting, I keep a list running of everything we're funding from free cash, everything we're funding from raise appropriate to make sure that nothing. But we need, nothing, to, we need to get excuse we need me, to get no, that the the longevity. We need the people, to get that because we had that same problem on the floor last oh, year is that we didn't know what the number job. was. So yeah. as a citizen's petition, they're required to bring that with them. If they can't provide the data, then we don't have an actual number to vote on. And we're not required to bring anything, which is the reason that we didn't have that. Last year, we had the data for what we were voting on. And when the motion was made to expand it to other departments that we were not originally voting on, that's why it was voted incorrectly. So if it's a citizen petition, they're required to bring all of the backup. So if they don't reach out to someone like the like treasurer me or the treasurer prior and get the data, then we can't vote a number because they don't have a number. Uh, Lori, <laughs> when you say we can't vote a number, is that, a, um, is that based on mass general law? I don't find out for you, okay. but there's no enough, you're not voting on anything, you're it's voting on an article, it's written with no Yeah, the, the, I, I understand there has to be a total, it's just, yeah. if, it, if, it, if, if lack of a total makes the article on its face invalid, that's, it, it's just, it, understanding that is, is important. Okay. It's, it's, I, I, Jeff, it's I, not I, our article. I, I, I'm speechless because I don't want to be, excuse me for saying this publicly, I don't want to be on the, the podium again being a bobo because I don't know what the friggin' numbers are. Mm-hmm. So we need, we need as either the advisory committee, accountant, no. treasurer, select people, what, what the number is, is so that no. we have a couple. Oh, okay. No, it is, it, is, it is incumbent on the presenter of the article to bring this it, to it, the it, meeting. I am not doing their homework. No. I refuse to do their homework. So on the, meet, on, the, on the floor when it's brought up and being talked about, if they can't provide the number, then it would strike me as an invalid article because we can't vote because we don't know the number, yeah. so we can't even have a vote. Right. Didn't we vote we don't on know the that they're providing enough funds to cover all of the employees that they say their article is for. Didn't we vote on this last year? No, but it was a one-off. It was a one-time. It was a, well, it was it was a one-time time bonus, and this is this is making it policy this that it shall be made in And fundamentally, right? Like last year, we had a lot of discussion because of the. Because eight point whatever you guys promised the world and then you screwed. Thank you for holding in, Peter. So, and the budget. Well, yeah. No, we were under. So we had we had we had we had linked it. Yeah, go ahead. So we voted it last year, but it never was implemented. It's not allowed to. We don't pay longevity until the end of the fiscal year ever. That that is 
That's a thing. Yeah. This so, fiscal, but so it was voted last year before the end of fiscal year. But no, it was voted at fiscal year 24 is town meeting. Yeah. So, so, you know, so it'll get paid at the, the, the it'll get paid um, June, the last the last paycheck yeah. in June. So it's coming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like we had one person get it already because he had left employment. I have not paid a single person in longevity. Not at the moment. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure he can't. Now, I, I just had a conversation with him about it yesterday. Now, he oh, said he no. hasn't got it. He hasn't no, got it. He said he, will, he won't get oh, it till okay. June. Oh, he won't get I it, even though he retired. Yeah. Oh, okay. We, we, just, we just said. And if you're not, if you're not employed at the, at the end of the year, you don't get it. If you're not here on June 30th, you don't get it. But, we, but I think we made a special vote to give it to him. No, we didn't. No. We didn't? No. That was not a special vote. But he's going to get it at the end of the year. No, he's not. If you are not an employee of the town on June 30th, you are not getting a longevity bonus. Somebody answered that question in the opposite manner. Yeah. He, yeah, I thought I thought, thought if you were I thought if you retired. No. You are an employee of the no, town. No, that's on stipend. June 30th. So so stipends. So let's let, let's say for instance, I was the one up for election and and people kicked me to the curb on on May 6th. Right, or whatever our, our election is, right? I would still get my stipend um, for, right. at the, at, in yes. June. In June for what I work, yes. but that's different than longevity. It is very that, different. That's very different than okay. longevity because that's my actual longevity. You have to make it through this fiscal year. Yeah, the whole year. But I thought this board made a promise. You can't make promises. Like I know, but I, I'm not sure if it's the right word. <laughs> or you can't it, make that promise. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember. Be, I remember yes, the discussion yeah. being that that it would happen. Was it a meeting that I missed? I, I don't. Remember. I don't remember. You're at most of the meetings. I don't keep detailed track of. Yeah. Of I mean, I've missed a couple. I don't remember that conversation. And I usually remember money conversations. Mm -hmm. No, I remember we had a specific meeting about this. So here's the other issue. I can't pay someone who is not an employee here yeah. anymore. You can't do that. <laughs> it's not the way yeah, it works. You retire, you're off of our payroll. You're now collecting the <laughs> well, can't. Yeah, we're, we're not going to solve that particular yeah. problem yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's 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 so out of the weeds. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you did so. 34 through 37. You also have 15,000 in free cash now to reallocate because. You had free cash mark next to those articles. Yes. So that was um, that was yeah that was in the uh, in the discussion and so that's that comes off the board. Yeah. Uh, so Tim, you had a no no I think we uh, killed that one dead. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you can use my gavel. You did one. <laughs> For the audience at home, uh, someone made the comment that this discussion is going to get longevity pretty soon. There, I thought it was damn funny. They already tuned out. <laughs> yeah, they're they're all gone. There's nobody there. <laughs> all right. So, is is there anything? Is there is there, is there any other discussion on the warrant? Yes. Uh, yes, Lori. The back horn. You made them Second. very, very specific. Um, okay. Uh, so we don't recommend You have to make a model and everything. Oh. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. I really suggest just going with backhoe. Mm -hmm. um, just in case when you go to buy it, you can't get yourself a John Deere model 310. See, it's added or similar in the lawyer. Yeah, so don't put John Deere. I, I just wish we could, I wouldn't put the name or the model number in yeah. it. Uh, um, uh, I will take that advice and uh, I will propose that we modify the text to say for purchase of a new backhoe to replace existing equipment and then in the descriptive text um, intended uh, purchase of a John Deere model 320 or similar. And we just move the model description to the descriptive text the same way we have the number. I love that. It's like, it's like, I right, so I will, I will take a motion. I'll make a motion to make that adjustment. Okay. Uh, all right. So. The trading article has the same description. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I make a motion that for the backhoe articles, we remove the reference to the specific model and, and uh, uh, type and just reference it as a backhoe uh, of similar type uh, for the purchase and a the backhoe currently in possession of the <laughs> the highway department for the trade-in. Second. I was just going to touch on the backhoe topic right quick. Uh, 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 oh, 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 Lindsay, one second. 
Uh, it's like, I want to get the wording change done. Uh, so all in favor of the uh, wording changes proposed for the two backhoe articles, please say aye. Aye. Aye, thank you. Lindsay, please go ahead. No, no worries. I, just, I, just, I didn't want to forget the vote. And you did bring up a good point. So the quote that, we, that was received from the John Deere backhoe, which was presented to all of you, the members, that did not come from a state vendor. We intend on purchasing through state contract, which essentially would likely drop the price of the backbone. I'm not going to say it's going to go down 20000 but it will likely be less. It's always better to assume more, of, as you guys know. Um, that particular invoice came from our, our common, common vendor that we use that's local to us. They're actually not on the state contract through um, the OSD website. So just, just throwing that point out there. Um, Obviously, we would, we would call there um, of 15 um, valid heavy equipment uh, vendors, seven of them carry this particular brand of backup. So there are seven people that we could reach out to to get the best number. Yes, yes. all us. looking for our business. Yes, exactly. And now look for something slightly different. There you go. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, so whatever you need, don't buy any in German. Because it it's always breaks. <laughs> no, it always breaks. No, it, they, it's over engineered. Because I, I had a agree. bunch. Of, I had a bunch of. I had a bunch of equipment that that was that was uh, when I was with the army, like Corps of Engineers. That was like that was actually from a German vendor, and it was. Doesn't Farvig Nugent say it's going to last forever? <laughs> no, no. no Farvig Nugent is. It's fun when it works. <laughs> there you go. It's fun when it works. I drove a Volkswagen for years. It was very fun to drive. I had a Volkswagen. I swear, it had a problem every month. Everything, every, everything something okay. broke every time. Right. Lori, <laughs> my trophy. Is there anything else in here that you think we should be aware of? I think, I think that was my last note. Okay, excellent. Because I'm not even going to try and close discussion until I make sure you have nothing more. I've been shot down too many times. All right. So, uh, does anyone else at the at in in our joint meeting? Have any concerns or questions here on the article on, on anything else? Because if not, well, I'd like to try and put it to bed. Do we, do we vote the channel donation? I don't know. Why is your own donation original? Is this for a discussion after? Well, I, I believe we, Lindsay's here about the, whether there would be need for it and also to talk about the. Um, the, the, the whether the need for the pumps. Right, but I think in the new one there isn't. So put, put I think the gravel we have the discussed. Oh, I, I put that in there just because. Do we? Do we? That was that well, was. We still, I, mean, still I don't know if we need Lindsay for that. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's like it touches on highway, but it's like that. It means more of select board policy. We've never sent <laughs> no, any we money on that. Or we've never spent any money on that. Do we need to put in more money? Uh, they actually just spent their money. Um, I had a question. Um, I'm sorry, they. They just spent the gravel road money. Yeah, that's um, what I thought. A week ago. Yeah, but. Because I just signed it on the warrant. Yeah, just spent it. Article 28, the um, marijuana. Yes. Tax. It says 3% in the article, but why underneath it does it say 1.5%? It says so not, not greater than 3%. But not to exceed 3%, that was 3%, but we're actually going to uh, make the motion to be 1.5. Oh, interesting. And what was the reason for the long course? Um, I don't have any challenge, you can just go free. The intention, uh, the, the, the declared intention was that by uh, doing a slightly lower tax rate, we uh, may attract more businesses here and make, make it up on volume. Because they've got some, we were, we're so surrounded by people that have retail establishments. Figured, it, figured we would just sweeten the pot a little bit. I don't have anyone that didn't just go free. Yeah. yeah, everybody in the state of Massachusetts is at three percent. They are. So yeah. we, have to, we have to vote through. So, right. uh, but, uh, and, and and by not putting a number in there, like we can have the discussion. If people want to go three, then they can make that change yeah. on the floor. So we phrase the article in such a way it's up for the town to decide. But we at least make a case for: do we go one five, or do we go two, or do we go three? So, so Lori, <laughs> Lori, are you telling me we just spent money on the? Uh, Warrant article account hey, um, for gonna... gravel for private roads. Yes. We just literally just, I just signed the thing from Bob. Okay, okay, that's 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 that's, yeah. that's fine. But my understanding is that the deployment of the gravel requires a vote of the select board. So it sounds like Highways bought the gravel, so now it's yeah, ready to go. Yeah. So Highway bought it, so it's ready to go. It's like 
we still haven't we still haven't approved any uses for it. So yeah, but, right, so right. right. But, no but this would but that would this yeah. be the typical yeah. season for it, right? Because it's post winter, it, you you got potholes and such to fill, so that next right. year when you're when you're doing private okay. road plowing, you're not. Okay, I get your it's, it's not it's not that much money. Room? So it is. Now that's going to use all of it. <laughs> Yeah. On the first part. Well, that and, dra and that and Draper going up to the water tower. Water yeah, tower. that one definitely. There are several. So the, the problem with the chestnut, which I think we should sit down at a later time and discuss, because they don't necessarily qualify and fit all the stipulations required yeah, I thought to I heard go that. forward to the board selectmen to approve us to come out and do repairs. Um, you have to have three or more dwellings, which is one of the boxes that have to be checked. And we actually just got the, uh, the abutters list today from Al. And it looks like there are technically only two on Chestnut Street. Um, the other one's technically on Forest. So it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit of like a, to be decided, I guess, by you guys on, on what's determined. Mm -hmm. um, because it is a terrible road. It definitely mm -hmm. needs some attention. And everybody who's ever driven by it knows that. But we can't touch it until you know it gets to the point where the board says, OK, yeah. yes, you guys can go out and deploy some. So material, whatever, yeah. Someone asks and we authorize it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm I'm I'm, go I'm good with it this year. It's like if it's if nothing's if, but it'll come up again as we haven't done it if we haven't approved any of this work next year. Yep. That's like that's fine. So there, there was one article on the old warrant that didn't show up on the new warrant and it was a same thing with the three fifty or was something about. The nineteen hundred and twenty six dollars would oh, be a charity or whatever. Oh, we removed that. You just removed the company. We took it all. We took it off. We're that's why the agenda renamed, for tonight was renaming the account. Yeah. Well, that's all. Right. So we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, because okay. it's Thank a you. it's it's not a warrant article account, so it's not something. This yeah. this renaming doesn't have to go to town meeting. Okay, okay. got it. And so, and 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 basically, we we think we found a good use for it, and so we don't need feel the need to send it there. Okay. Yeah. So that came up. All right. So, excuse me. If that's done, and all these changes. Um, Let's get this thing closed so we can send it to the lawyer. Make a motion to close the warrant. Second. All right. Um, you guys good? Before I close the before we vote to close the warrant, I, do you have anything I'm else? Pretty, well, I think we are. I don't think we. I think we voted on everything that, that's listed. If we missed something, well, we, we missed it. it. Well, it's more. It's 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 more. If you, if you need to approve something, that's fine. But once once I close it and send it to no, the. No, that, that, that's fine. I mean, if we show up as we we just just didn't vote it because it wasn't you know, whatever, that's fine too. You, I mean, you can vote on it after I close it, yeah. Lori. Okay. Before you close it, are you going to do something with that fifteen thousand in free cash? Are you just going to let it? Uh, let's see. Oh, well, I need we fifteen. No, no. Well, well we, we do. Well, it's it's fifteen thousand that we were allocating, and so well, let's do this. All let, let's just not close the warrant and discuss it because I'd, I'd like to get the vote off. I don't want to forget yeah. this vote. So, all in favor of closing the warrant, please say aye. All opposed, please say no. 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 All right. So let's okay. Back yeah. discussion. So it was the thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, the original computer stuff. Right. So the, that fifteen is still sitting there. Oh, so, right. so do we do we let it ride or do we reallocate it? Whether it's the stabilization, whether it's to OPEB, whether it's to something. We don't have a, I don't think we have a transfer money to stabilization article. We could add just the transfer to stabilization mm -hmm. article and, and just, even though it's a token sum, you yeah. know, it's a place where we can say we're bad and it's Because we're way behind on that. Then it's the pension. I would, oh, I, well, I, I would be. Put in OPEP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I would recommend doing I mean, OPEP. I would just say so we could either put it in regular stabilization, we could put it in capital stabilization, because otherwise we would, because if we had money, we wouldn't be transferring from, or actually, what are we doing? We're doing free cash. We're transferring free cash to the roof stabilization. Yep. So we already, so we already have uses for free cash. Um, no, we're doing. We're, no, we're not doing free cash to roof stabilization. We're doing capital stabilization to roof stabilization. That's what we're doing oh, with that right. account. That's right. We are. Yep. So I would say, if we're going to do this, I would backfill. I want to backfill capital stabilization, or do the roof stabilization. Yeah, but we do need to pay that off. 
I mean, how bad? I it's, know. It's going to be there forever. There are two towns in the entire state that are funded. Are we? Not even those. <laughs> are we making? Are we making progress? Are yeah. we making progress? Your your liabilities seven point seven and seven point seven million. Yes. Um, and we, have <laughs> we have like a hundred like, thousand. <laughs> how, but how fast is, is is our is our liability growing faster than the money we're putting in? Yes, yes. Yeah. by a lot. Yes, and, well. and you can thank everyone at the school for that because we, that's the problem with our town is you just look at other small towns and their liability is like three hundred thousand because they are not they're fully regional. Yeah, they don't we, have their elementary. School. It's because we have our liabilities mixed with the elementary school. Mm -hmm. So we have a ton of employees, and our every year our liability just gets bigger and bigger. We're not even keeping up with it. So uh, this is terrible to say, but you just hope they pass away and not collect on it. Theoretically. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's actuarial. <laughs> Well, no. Spoken by a man, like a man in the insurance industry. Jeez, right. Their spouses are accounted too, so we right. have to get rid of all of them. Right. But. Insurance. Jeez. <laughs> <No. laughs> I know you want the rates to stay the same. <laughs> well, but, so, but, but, here's, but here's the thing. The, the weird thing, though, and here's, here's, the, here's the only saving grace, right, is that the, the thing is, is that for generations we funded retirement from our operating budget, yeah. right? So, so like we have this, we have this huge liability, which is like all the money. But that that's we'll kind of a fake collected. number. It's right. a fake number. Yeah, it's it, it's it's it real, but it's yeah. it's it real, but it's into not. account that people are going to live right forever. Everyone's going to live to ninety five, and, and statistically, statistically, it's not going to happen. No, I mean, and that's why they update it every year to see okay, who who has knocked off, and, right. you know. If people have gotten divorced and now are not responsible anymore, and have we lost employees right. and everything, it, so it, it updates every year to see, but for some reason ours just it goes up every year. Yeah. I would personally put it into capital, and I would not leave it on the table, especially when you have potential funding at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, open money. yeah. so, so, I, I, I would, I, yeah, I, I like that recommendation. And, and, it, and since we didn't put numbers in the warrant articles, I would just recommend that we change the recommendation. So you're thinking that into the, into the, um, into the capital cap state. Into the capital, because you're moving um, stuff or roof, so I would just put it into capital. Can you, can you do, you can do a two-part motion for that, right? You can do both the movement of the, you can do, fund it both from free cash and do the, the transfer in, in one fell swoop. For the roof or for capital? For capital. Um, as long as they're both going into the same place, then yes. Okay, so like if we looked at, so in Article 42, we could get a motion drafted Oh no, because that's a transfer, and if the transfer from stabilization it requires a two-thirds vote. Yeah, and you're putting in, so you only need a majority vote, so you need a fresh article. Yeah, so we would need an additional article. Yep. To transfer so we in. could do we could do a transfer of sixty thousand dollars, and then do fifteen thousand dollars as a free cash into roof stabilization, mm -hmm. and still get us the seventy-five. So you're you're recommending sixty thousand based on a. So I'm 64, uh, almost $65,000 in unallocated free cash? That's the number I have. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I don't have the spreadsheet up. Or okay. I had the spreadsheet up and it closed on me. So. Okay. So, I mean, my thought would be if we have $65,000 of free cash, I would say do that and then we have to make a decision. Do we just short fund the roof this year by ten grand? Or do we do the trick? You know, we can always go get that ten thousand out of general stabilization or capital stabilization. Right. It's like, yeah, I, it's like I'm I'm fine with just changing the roof stabilization to sixty thousand from free cash and leaving capital and not touching capital stabilization. That makes it a one majority vote. Yep. And it makes it very straightforward. Yeah, and it, it might be and a little short, but we can always go get it but, but, later. But when we need it, when we need to pull it out, we'll just. Pull a little more out of capital stabilization instead of yep. roof stabilization. Yep. The, the money's there for us. Yep. It's like, all right, all right. So, so that would be my recommendation: is that we would. So, and 
So that article would actually go from a transfer article to a... A free cash. It would become a oh, actually, it, actually, we just need to... We need to... Why is it that they even had a source on this again? Or it was just to allocate the fact that it needed a two-thirds vote? Well, no, because, it, because we were using a stabilization account as a source, we had to specify the source. No, we didn't. No. Oh, no. okay. This article I'm, always I get, yeah, no, sorry. I, get, I know you're, you're I'm right. I'm glad you're agreeing. No, you're right. You're you're right. We did. It's like I, maybe just because we knew we said we know it's definitely coming from here, but we should definitely generalize the source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. So and, and I would actually say that's probably a change that needs to happen in 41 as well. Like transfer a sum of money to the OPEB fund liability and just and then have the motion be from free cash and then. 42 chain vote to transfer a sum of money uh, to roof stabilization, and then again identify the source in the motion. We already yeah. have all the votes. Yeah. All right, so, um, so I'll take motion to um, modify the language in, in current 41 and current 42 to um, make the source of funding non-specific and the amount, and to uh, keep the amount non-specific. Yes, that's the motion. Sorry. All in favor, uh, any discussion? All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 aye, thank you. And then we also need to modify in current 42 the amount from 75 to 60 as discussed. Motion. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All in favor uh, of that motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you. So 60K, and that means we expect there will not be a two-thirds vote required because it does no longer involves a, yeah, a stabilization it's, it's source. It's a simple majority. Yeah. It becomes a majority vote. Okay. And we don't have a bunch of loose money floating around. Yes. All right. Anything else? All right. Then I, then I think the plan is we close the warrant. Uh, we put a final set of numbers on these articles, and it goes off to the lawyer. For real this time. For real this time. All right. For so, real, real. motion to close the warrant. Second. All in favor of closing the warrant, please say aye. 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 All right. So, Karen, that's for Monday. Monday is. Uh, oh, Monday's no closed. Monday. But are you working from? Uh, or are you, you're time? taking comp time, aren't you? I gotta. I've, yeah, oh, I have to use some comp. Yeah, okay, then, the th then this is for Tuesday. Yeah, is that the this rule? Yeah, this one. What do you mean? Like people? Um, I believe people, can work from home. Uh, people who are capable of working from home may work from home. Um, Karen has comp time, so I think she's right. just going to use her comp time, which yeah. I think I is I have a lot of comp time. In fact, I tried to use it the other day, take an extra lunch, and then I ended up staying late, so it didn't do any good. But yeah, I'll use it. All right. I'll, I can do this Tuesday and then send it to Michelle. I want you... Everyone wants to look at it anyway. I'll send you a draft. All right, so for the, uh, all right, so that gets us that. Um, we've talked about the Little Highway. Um, do, we, do, um, do we need any more convincing on the back? Oh, uh, Lindsay, on the backhoe. Yes. Um, I know that uh, from, from the discussion when, uh, when Gary was here, when, when at the uh, department head meeting last week, when I was talking to Gary, he said that the uh, it's not the bushings so much; it's the hydraulics and the uh, electronics, Correct. and the uh, and the rest of them from the previous uh, fire or fires. Yes. It's like, is there any way we could get a a third party eval of that? Because I think I think there's a it's like I think there's some people in town they say we just need to maintain the bushings and it'll it'll last forever and it's like and I don't know these things. Right. We can certainly get a, uh, a cost evaluation for the repairs that are required outside of the repairs that we've already done. Right. Um, which included rebuilding and custom fabricating the cab from all the rock spots that it had last year before the was retired. Mm -hmm. um, so, but certainly, yes. Because I think that, because uh, understanding the numbers behind the justification or yeah. the, the numbers that are driving the decision to say a new one is better than putting more money into this one. Right. 
It's like, yeah, what, in, at, at, at the very least, in the interest of, of transparency and helping, and helping people in town understand why we think this is a good decision. Right. I don't know that we'll convince everyone, yeah. but at least this way, it's like some people say, oh, it's, it's a lot of people just say, it's why aren't fine. they just doing the bushings? Yeah. It should be fine, it'll last forever. It's like, it yeah, sounds like it's not just, just the bushings. Thing, I'll let you, we talked about it briefly, yeah. um, is that while it's being repaired, you've got to rent it out of the machine. Right. So one of those uh, opportunity costs are, right. right, if it's sidelined for two months, well, you got, you got to work, you got to rent something. Yeah. No, no. So that, that's a good I point. That, kind of inclu that. Inclu that should be included in the analysis. Okay, sure. Is that, uh, it, like, if it's good, like, two months repairs, where we're going to need, there are going to be 10 or 15 days where we're going to need to rent something because we're just going to need it, and right. ours is in the shop. It's like, e I will trust you to come up with the right numbers on that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, most certainly. Um, United Construction, which is a John Deere dealer, and is who we deal with generally, so I feel like they would be able to give some fair assessment on what a mm -hmm. true, like, you know, uh, repair cost would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and then for, uh, I know that for the um, pumps, the pump replacement, it's like so the, 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 obser the observation fuel is fuel software. Fuel software. <laughs> okay. We're not just replacing the pumps. I okay, a, fu a fuel dis a fuel dispensing system. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, but but it's like uh, the the observation has been made that it's like basically this is. We spend this much, about this much on gasoline in a year. Okay, so, so it's a big, it's a big chunk I know, of money. I, I've had, that has come up as well. But remember, mm -hmm. this is the, those are two separate, separate items. So the the reason why this fuel software replacement upgrade is so important, and, and I'm actually glad Peter is here because he knows. Right now we have very <laughs> functional but old pumps, okay, mm -hmm. which are fine. The tanks they're old but functional, they're fine. The problem lies within the software, the computer that we have is so old, quite honestly, it's the computer, there's a designated computer, if you've ever been in my office, it's behind my real computer and it can never ever be turned off because if it ever were to turn off, it would, it would do updates and the updates would not allow the old dinosaur software that we have to be compatible. It would just be, so we, we'd be wasting money on it. So the current software is over 25 years old. It's, a, it's one of the original versions of Gas Boy. It is essentially completely useless to us because we don't have any way to print it. We don't have any way to pull reports from it. We are basically unable to track fuel and gasoline usage. And why that's important is because we right now have a clipboard, <laughs> pen and paper, you don't always remember, in the middle of a snowstorm or whatever, whether you're fueling, what, how much you put in, what you were driving, whatever. So it, the importance of it is that there are so many people, so many departments that use this, fire, police, uh, obviously highway, um, the uh, cemetery, et cetera. Um, it's important. And this, this upgrade would give us the ability to, um, every piece of equipment, every vehicle would have their own fob associated with it. So we would know what time, how many gallons, what the mileage was on the car, the cruiser, the ambulance, the backup, whatever. Um, and it would bring it into technology where it's, it's based off, it's cloud-based software. So basically it's just protected by a login, a password, and everything is digitalized and you can you know, retrieve the data instantaneously from your phone, from any, basically any device that you can access the website. So it brings our 27-year-old software that's basically useless. I really don't even use it. I, I rely more on our deliveries and track it through my Excel spreadsheet, which is also prehistoric. Um, and it brings us up in the, to this century and gives us a true way to track fuel. Okay. Now, will the, if, if the Fuel Boy computer were to fail, yes. we'd still be able to pump, right? You can, you can still pump, okay. yes. It just, there's okay. no... It's, you're just... But is the fuel, is the, yeah. so what is the fuel boy system doing for us now? Nothing. We bought it outright from my okay. understanding a but, million years ago. But, we just have never upgraded it. Okay, but if, but if 
we can't turn the computer off, but we don't use anything from it. Why not just well, turn the computer off? Well, I shouldn't say nothing. I do, I, every month okay. I take a, a reading from it, and the guys will go and put a stick into the tank and make sure the readings are, are coinciding. However, oh, okay. that's only for gasoline. We do not have a way to track our fuel, diesel fuel. Okay, and the new system would allow us to track both fuel types. Correct, yes. And in a well-integrated manner. And mm -hmm. so it sounds like the fuel boy system is pretty much just a monthly, so, how much did we track? Mm -hmm. And then someone dips the stick in and says, mm -hmm. how much did we actually pump? Right. And so it's a very gross reconciliation. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, Beth, go ahead. So it allow us to do bottoms up budgeting on both gas and diesel because what we could do is present a budget based off of projections mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. usage and the and we'd be able to track various usages over time and it's like hey why why it's like why is this department suddenly using more we'd be able to track by department too mm -hmm. well i'm That's thinking that we could actually break out we could actually break out from a from a community we could do kind of and actually break it out by department eventually mm -hmm. well that new system should help with like state reporting too right because i'm assuming you're doing that by hand now right yes yeah, so yeah. all of our um we do do the fuel procurement. We do take part in that every year, and they you do have to give an estimated usage of what you're going to be projected to be using. And it's all based off my Excel spreadsheet, which it's pretty valid, but it is it's pretty dinosaur mm -hmm. status, So, okay. um, I mean, it's. It, is there any yeah. ongoing um, right. recurring expense? Right. Like once once this upgrade is done, would there be recurring maintenance expense? Um, or yes, there is. And we actually, uh, part of that $40,000 request does include three years of that maintenance fee. They do have a monthly maintenance fee, which includes um, any upgrades, 24 seven customer service, all that like normal mumbo jumbo. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe it's, I, I have to look, I wanna say it's $1,200 for the year for, for 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, for however long we decide. We actually did, I talked to Jacob too, to see if it's something that Jacob's knowledge, and it actually turns out that he is um, well versed on this particular, I forget the, the terminology that you use, but anyway, Jacob at, at one point would be able to, to essentially take over as the software administrator. Yeah. <laughs> there mm -hmm. you go. Um, so, you know. They, okay. do, they do kind of require you to be on it, though, for at least three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. The, the select board is currently uh, has that article in the warrant and is recommending it. But right. it's like, but we did, want, uh, we did want you here to be able to, so that when yeah, we get asked questions, we can community. answer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's one second. Um, no, do we need to assess? No, I just need to run that thing. Okay. But I don't need to I do. Well, I do. I, I was thinking I might need to run, too. But, they have to go down right. and, and so, do, do, right. not while I was here. No one ever did recommendations. Do I need to go get my charger? Jeff, you, you guys uh, do. I'm sorry, advisory. Is there anything else we that, that you would like to see discussed or discussed with us with regards to the operating budget well, might have or the warrant? Done it the week I was gone, but because they're on the agenda, we, we're here. We got the. We might as well close it off. The, the, my my only point was we had come in. I think we had met the chief in the you middle of for us. What we recommended the, between the fourteen or, or the eighteen originally was fourteen, and then it went up to. To 18 with an addition, and then I think we had voted 16. But I mean, we're we're not averse to going up yeah. another 2,000. Yeah, yeah I mean, your, your recommendation is your number. If you want to talk to us about our recommendation uh, now, no, no, I, I don't okay. think. It, all I'm okay. trying to say, Tom, is that I don't think that anything and, else and the chief could add yeah. would would help influence our division one way or the other. We're just discussing okay. here. You know, does it you know, doesn't really matter one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we probably just one other thing on that is yeah. that you know at the time we weren't we didn't know really the levy the levy limit was still somewhat unclear mm -hmm. and all the numbers were unclear so we were trying to take a knife to pretty much as many things as we could not knowing what the levy limit was going to be mm -hmm. that yeah. was really the only my just be clear came around only speaking for the not the crazy, crazy, uh, project committee but that was my thing to just to kind of cut it in half, yeah, right, save yeah. a couple bucks here. Mm -hmm. yeah. But bottom line is, I mean, the 18000 is really not, not a big deal, and okay. I don't have any issue with that at all. All right, so, so let's go ahead and take a vote, and then we'll leave, or we'll adjourn, and we'll move on to anything else. All right, motion for the... For the 18000 Is it still 18, Peter? Yeah. Peter? yeah.
18. I'll second the 18,000. I believe the request is for 18. All the things? Aye. All right. So, and just one thing about his request that we the sixty six thousand five hundred for the fire wages. I did ask the chief, and he said it is before cola. So we did give the sixty six thousand five hundred, and we will add cola to it. Mm -hmm. So just make that one, one change. Okay. And then yeah, I made it. Okay, yeah. so okay. All right. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. Yes. All second. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Aye. All right, Tom. I'll send you my spreadsheet later. Thank you. I'll send. I'll send you my numbers. They, they will not have your updates in. I, I don't. I will tell you if I get your updates in before or after I send them. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Or okay. if you want to send it to me and unlock it, and I'll mm -hmm. do our updates and mm -hmm. send it back to you. Whatever's easier yeah. for you. And, and just send me your numbers. And again, right. I respectfully request that before the warrant book goes anywhere, at least if I get a chance to take a look and just. Double check because mm -hmm. our numbers are not. The, the bottom line number is, is more or less the same, but I noticed a lot of differences. Right. So. Yes. Well, I appreciate the prudence on your going lower than cola than them. If we continue to do that, if we let it slip a little bit each year, then some of us that are still going to be here in 10 years will be sitting here asking questions of people from the Collins Center when we do it all over again. Because mm. we let this stuff suffer for too long. <laughs> 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 Lori says I can't do that again. I appreciate you. He said Coley brought a quote. But it's, it's a long stand. And unfortunately, that type of thing also sets up the constant this end of Central Street versus that end of Central Street. Mm -hmm. So. Or you get all the angry people. No, I'm not doing another salary <laughs> study, and I'm not doing another round of retro pay, and I'm not doing it. So I'm standing firm on that. <laughs> well, when the police contract yeah, settles, police retro. Other, other than police. That's okay. easy though, because that's right. because you know, you know, perfectly. Thank you all. We've done that a few times. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right, Thanks. Peter, Bye. come up and join Bye. us. Bye. We can Bye. finally. Bye. Bye. I was hoping if we met last week, this would be an easier meeting, but it's like, oh my goodness, everything. And oh, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. And then. All right, so uh, let's see. With, uh, so right now, our recommendation for fire is level funding on the expenses and COLA for the wages. And we wanted to, and, and that we put that in more as a placeholder, and we didn't see that as a as sort of a this is what we want. We just needed to do something to move the budget process forward. I didn't, I didn't bring my budget with me, so you okay. just if somebody has a copy of it, I appreciate it. not. Um, yes, I, I, I have because I had, I remember I got back to you with the stuff we spoke of, yes. spoke about, spoke in regards to. There you uh, go. Oh God, please tell me it's going to be bigger for ten years. <laughs> Do you want me to hand you my computer so you can no, see? No, I can. I can kind of. Yeah. Um, okay, Karen? so the, so the first. Well, I can I can I can print you out a bigger one, or I can have Karen do it more uh, specifically. No, we can we can work on this. Okay. Okay, so uh, you were talking about level funding. Was that just expenses, or is that we level funded the fire expenses and fire utilities? Okay. And oh, and also testing and fixed a asset, fixed asset replace and repla repair. Okay. So testing. anything not wages, we level funded. Okay. Testing is going to be a problem because testing is down pr pretty much on a yearly basis to the letter. Uh, to the Tom, number. on the copy that I'm looking at of the budget for testing, we had it at the at the requested level. Oh, I apologize, right. um, uh, Peter. Peter, my yeah. error. We, okay. we we vo we we voted the requested amount for testing. We're talking about forty bottles that have to be tested on a five-year interval. Mm -hmm. It'll it'll come back down, barring inflation on the other vendors. But that's it. I've got mm -hmm. forty bottles that need to be tested at three hundred dollars each. Yep. That's that's federal. I can't. It's a pressurized vessel. I have to have them tested at five, and so we looked out. Yes. Um, there was there was conversation about asset. Uh, mm -hmm. going, uh, you got my breakdown in that in email that I sent each of you individually, collectively. Um, the uh, asset usually goes, usually runs out by February. Oh, 
Should I do this? Yes. Um, so you have asset ran out in February and since then it's 46 and that's actually going to go up. It's probably going to be closer to, uh, well, it's going to be over 5,000 that I've had to take out of expense to cover assets mm -hmm. that had that issue. So there's that. So yeah, we can raise asset. We can take some out of expense, but they're both covered by inflation. So I mean, and yeah. basically it's like in the past, we've typically had to top up the expense account at the end of the year because you've been potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. And, and that's, that's the product of any reactionary department, the more, we had a record year last year. We're on track potentially for another. The more stuff happens, payroll goes up. You know, usage goes up, fuel goes up. So yeah. I mean, I I prefer to, to fund the uh, the the asset and yep. the uh, testing accounts, and then if it turns out that then when they're f properly funded, you have too much expense money. We can look at that and right. let you go into it or trim yeah. it down depending on how close you are to so it. So utilities, utilities were at the mercy of whatever the vendors have, although probably, I don't know. You're pretty the, good on utilities yeah, right now. And this, this we haven't seen any of the zero invoices thanks to the police department's thing yet. No, we're having a, a little issue with national. Oh, right? thank God. <laughs> There's like 45 forms right now, so it should kick in. But in that's going to come back to the individual ones, not the collective one? It's going to come back to each individual account because I assigned the credit to everybody's individual account. Okay, so we're so months away from knowing just how that's going to affect you. You'll get no bills basically right. for probably the next six months. Okay, so utility, and that, came, that comes out of my individual utility. No, unfortunately, no. that comes out of the new the collective, the collective account now. Okay, all right, so that doesn't so affect us. No individual. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. But you're doing pretty good in your utility. Yeah, we're, we're holding our own on that. So, okay, so utilities barring any great rate hikes, and you know, we, we can send the AG after them with that. Uh, expense, again, we're doing okay. Uh, testing, I have to keep that one. Asset, okay, we said we've gone, we're going to be over five over at the end, but I'm ready to cover at, out of expense. Um, I was told by a previous accountant years ago, they're like, they're like, why do people have so many accounts? So, but this was done for transparency years ago when that was the watchword, and some of us rolled our eyes at the other end of Central Street, like the A and A. Here's eight, here's millions of dollars. Um, so yeah, as long as there's that latitude, and with the end of the year transfers, it gives us even more. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, and then, that, then the best part too was, you know, at the total end of it, uh, the thing you've got, this little something like that. Um, yeah, so total fire, including wages. If I'm reading it right, is what 168 um, of the departments, so the towns have responded to my request for a per cap per resident breakdown of fire department budgets. You have the current one with the second low, this lowest at $46 a person a year. Mm -hmm. uh, the only, amazingly, the only one lower was Lester. And from our neighbors, I mean, worth $46 a person for fire, everything. East Brookfield's at 96. I don't know. Um, so yeah, we're doing okay on that. But, one. but that's a, um, and that that's. Uh, I'm just trying to understand figures per resident. Oh, that it that that's a per resident number. Yeah, per okay. resident per year. Mm -hmm. And I asked them pretty much everything that you everything you're telling uh, votes for zero zero one two two zero, and give me your number of people. And that's why I broke that one down. So it, it was more of a fun fact if you want to use it as such. Mm -hmm. There's nothing fun about it, but still. Um, so yeah, the wages, uh, the wages, there was this break, the breakdown, which went in with my original packet, it looks like that. And that was based, that was based anecdotally right across the board. This is the number of calls. This is the average amount of time. This is the average number of people. This is the rate of pay. Mm -hmm. This is the number of training. This is the number of people. This is the average rate of pay. And that's those three. And when it all came down to, uh, with a little bit of rounding, uh, $60,000, if we just did it at that and we didn't factor in the call volume increase. And amazingly, well, I'm, I don't want to jinx it. We are having decent recruitment, whereas my neighbors are not. Uh, I looked at just 
give me 7% more non-COLA for increased training. Not additional training, but training more new people. people. Um, and again, the state took three of my people away from me. Key people we needed to work on replacing. Um, call volume, we did what they say, 140 last year, Asia. and we're at like Asia. 150, the three retirements. So at that one, um, bring the assistant chief up to a more manageable level. Uh, so again, uh, so there's, assistant, MP, there's a, yeah, a bump on the assistant chief in there? Uh, yeah, on this page. It's not broken down individually, but he's not a separate one on there. It's, it falls under the grid. No, I, I, yeah, I, I so at that, that point, you're looking at, uh, you know, a fire department wages budget, not counting the chief of 66.5, which is barely one full-time equivalent. Mm -hmm. And if you throw the fire chief in at 18, being optimistic, now you're in the 80 range you're still barely above a 1.3 full-time equivalent. We're, we're a pretty decent deal. <sighs> so, if I may. Yeah, you're gonna make this big before town meeting, aren't you? Yeah, you're that's- Driven out of there by the annual pitchfork and mm -hmm. uh, torches parade. Mm -hmm. um, they won't have much paper to so start me, the fire, though. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> let, let me ask you a question. Yeah, thank you. If you were- Excuse me, I gotta- Go ahead. In, do you know how much time you spent in calls alone this last year? Um, well, I got I had, based on that form, uh, I did the math on projection based on a, a, a one year, the last full year that I had data for when the budgets were due. So I had as a hundred, I was factoring at 171 incidents, averaging at $20 an hour times four people. Well, how many hours per incident? Yeah, that's what I gotta see if I calculated that. And when I looked at where the bottom line came for our, our current one, that the math kind of backwards checked out. You asked me to remember math from months ago, and that's not. Because, uh, so, I mean, times at 2.5 hours per four. incident, 171 call outs at $45 an hour. That's it, ever did. That'd be $19,000 for the year. I'm sorry? I said, my math, 171 incidents at two yep. and a half hours per incident. But they're not if all, we, we're, we're dropping down a one hour minimum. Not all of them are, are one, some of them are just one person. Yeah, I'm not, okay, okay, okay. fair enough. Yep. yep. So, um, but then went back to the math, I did all this and then after some time on all, I went back and said, okay, this is a reasonable, based on using existing numbers to justify projected numbers, it kind of worked. Mm -hmm. Because if, it, if I'd come in like really close, I wouldn't have, but we were, we were there because what was it last year? What was my wages last year for somebody with better eyesight? Uh, let's see, the current year is 58,710. Okay, so yeah, as adding to including the deputy chief to 66,5, and again, that's not knowing what we're going to do for incidents. Again, we're already at uh, 53. Yeah, we're at 150. Last year, we were at 140. So, yeah. So, actually, the 171 incidents was a roundup based on estimation based on previous increases. So, if we did 140, if you're figuring 171 based on increases over the years, I kind of caught the math there, Beth, I believe. Because, yeah, Kelly called me in like her first and second year looking back. She says, yeah, you end up going over. She said, yeah, we understand that it's a reactionary department. And, you know, I don't have an overtime account. I also don't have, you know, the stipulations of overtime. And also, you know, the vast majority of overtime is covered by snow and ice. I don't have that. So it's just, yeah, I mean, one good, one or two good building fires or anything. And 
you know, I'll be back to see you, but I don't worry about those things until mm -hmm. I enter the third, you know, enter the fourth quarter of any fiscal year. It's, it's, you know, if we have a really bad fall, I don't, uh, autumn rather, if we have a really bad autumn, I'm not going to freak out because it, it'll level off. What's your busy time here? I'm sorry? sorry? What's your busy time here? It's, I've never really seen a cycle in it. Yeah. You know, the year overall gets busy, but you don't, you don't see it coming at the time. Um, I don't want to buy in the summer because of one particular address, but you know, that doesn't help. Um, but yeah, so I think that's where I, I think that's where I made up the math that was going from 140 incidents to 171 incidences, incidences, um, events tracking that forward. So. Or are we on the budget? Uh, let's see. Well, we're about ten thousand off, um, but and but that his numbers were just um, um, I would I would say in uh, there were no there was no cola in his number, so we'd have to put a uh, another cola in there. That'd be about twenty five hundred. Right, because twenty five hundred um, twenty five hundred dollars on wages because you the fire chief salary. I'm not going to put cola on. I don't think no. No, I'm, yeah, not, I didn't no, think you were I'm asking not going to go from 12 3 to 18 and say, where's my four? No, that's just rude. Um, I'll see you next year, but yeah. And I'll see you, and I'll next, see you year. And next year. If it's 2.3, I'm definitely going to see you next year. Um, and I wasn't trying to beat up on them, but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. If we don't keep that up, then those of us are still standing well, in eight or right. 10 and, years. And, and, new and that, people from UMass are going to be standing there like, and that's, what, and that's what kind of got us in trouble, right? The one year that there was outrageously high inflation is because... We said basically we did the Collins Center plus and then it was the, with the polls, and then it, it was, was the like next 8. year. Yeah. The next year. Right. So, uh, and that's one of the reasons why. Right. I, what, what, what did we do four? I think this year was uh, four, we yeah four. We've our recommendation has been based on a four percent. Yeah, and and that's, it, which is a scooch higher than what the actual, you know. And when you, was and at least you know we can yeah. start to yeah, start to work that back. So there's a lot of us that the four percent you got about not covered on a contract. Nobody here is. Nobody down there is yet. Um, I don't want to throw a house me at you people. Um, <laughs> that end, the Central Street. That is yeah. Um, there's coal. Um, Amy told me before she left health insurance. Eight percent. Eight percent. So those was full time not covered by a CBA that doesn't address that. Okay, that three point two on a single plan or you know family plan, it's there, and that's where we start losing it. Where other you know CBAs cover it or other individual agreements well, cover CBAs it. CBAs don't actually cover. They don't, it because, but because they they wind up getting hit. They get hit by the insurance the same way. They just uh, well, good. Yeah, private sector is being hit the same way. My husband's company went up like ten percent in right. insurance, and his raise was not. Right. Exactly. Right. We're not looking, but they're, they're yeah. And, and, and trust me, the the company I work for did not give us a. No, but there there were years where the two per, you know, we did a two percent cola, yeah. and it didn't even come close to covering. We were getting hit. Yeah. We were getting really hit hard. And I don't want to keep thinking this rationalization because the other and the Central Street had a lot more insurance claims. Yep. So they want to go K through 12, second, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, so that, so the 4% again, not just grandstand on that one, but I'm glad that, you know, we're holding, even their number wasn't horrible on it. Um, when it comes to mine, my, it comes down, the Collins Center report did not cover the fire chief's position. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came and we're, we're seeing it, we're probably well, seeing it a lot just in the last couple months. Are we going to be able to attract replacements with what we're doing? Right. And, you know, so that question comes up. So, uh, there's not even anybody on my department that would take the job for what I, and again, you need to realize my full time thing that I wear this for is not fire chief. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm a full time yeah. fire guy who happens to be fire chief. So, even at a, a mid range of estimation of what I'm worth, um, not counting like organ donation or anything, but um, <laughs> what I'm worth as fire chief in the mid to high 30s an hour, that's an hour a day. Yeah. I, I like to think, my God, it's, I've, I've been here half a week. Um, <laughs> um, so 
that's where, and again, I know it's incremental. We'll probably take a couple years off or we can do another study. But when you look at, you know, I ran this one out. Well, or, or how long resident? Your fire chief makes 27000 Yeah, and that's fantastic. I, I know Chief Grok, he's a great guy. I mean, he's probably worth every penny. But I don't want to think that I'm not. <laughs> and that this is the first time we've ever increased his pay. Right, right. Probably because it was pointed out, like, well, he's relatively new in terms of fire chiefs. He probably said, okay, I'll do it, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm not going to do it on your good graces. And <sighs> right, he has no other job in town, though, and our department there is set up completely different. Our budget yeah. for fire employees is $30,000. We don't, we only pay if you show up for a call. Mm -hmm. That's it. We don't pay for training. We don't pay for anything right. else. Yeah. So it's a strictly mm -hmm. call department. Yeah. What percentage of your hours is training versus current? Uh, fire? Yeah, for fire. Uh, fire training, um, based on old numbers and the percentage, um, looking over the training, and computers can be great, um, in that one year time period it was 970 hours. Okay. Department wide. Right, but that's spread across all the all everyone. Everyone, with there. the exception of myself, and the assistant chief. Mm -hmm. So coming out nine hundred and seventy hours, and an average of twenty dollars an hour came up to nineteen four. Mm -hmm. So all right, so and that year was um, looks like oh fiscal year twenty uh, ten thirty one twenty two to ten thirty one twenty three, which is where I needed to be when mm -hmm. this budget was requested. That was my last full twelve months of. Okay. I don't like doing it in three So that was six. mostly fiscal year 23? Yeah. All right. So, and the budget for that was 57,000. Wages budget was 57,000. You expended almost all of it. Mm -hmm. And so that means that about one third of your wages budget is training. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I just want to understand the breakdown. Yeah. But that's on. This was in but the original. Um, you emailed that to us, right? Uh, I emailed you. I, have, I've been, I emailed you this. No, what I uh, let's see. I can do both again. I was gonna say I've got, I've got I, this was attached to the email. Yes, and yeah, there was a bunch did, of did, Yes, so you got both of these. Yes, yes. So this was as a result of our discussion, whatever mm -hmm. your last meeting was, and just I said, well, you know what, attachments are free, so I sent you both mm -hmm. just for background. Thank you. Yeah. So. So. Question here, John. Yes, I'm looking at the budget. So, if we approve the call as whatever it's presumed, so then we're ten five seven six. Well, sixty six. Um, we are at. Oh. Well, if we, we, I, I, I can tell you now we're at ten five forty three and change. So if we if we add a cola to the fire to the if we. If we change the recommendation for fire and we increase what we recommend, then that's going to push the total budget up, and we don't have a lot of headroom. And we're look and there is recommended that we get our final number about twenty thousand dollars below maximum levy to give us our, give it ourselves a little cushion. So I think we're looking at about I think um, what's our max? yeah, but you if uh, I think we go uh, if we implemented if we went with the fire department's re request. And added in the cola that was not reflected in their request, we go up about twelve thousand dollars, and that means that to get to uh, Lori's recommendation, we need to find about uh, thirty thirty two thousand dollars of additional cuts in order to um, get to that point. So. I made suggestions to Jeff. I don't know if he passed them along to you guys or not. I know he implemented the cuts that I suggested in his side of the budget. I don't know if you guys. I can't read the sheet that I printed, okay. and I'm we, not going to keep attempting to try. We haven't. Uh, I don't. I, I. think they. They. They have some numbers that are lower than ours. They. They cut the legal budget more, and that was one like, of my suggestions. A couple others. The reserve fund. Uh, we took five thousand off the reserve fund, and we, we took five thousand off legal. They took twenty off legal. I suggested twenty, mm -hmm. ten, and then I suggested to cut the treasurer's budget in half. Those are my suggestions, and that's why they got so much lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had um, we we had talked about reconsidering the treasurer budget. The concern was that it was um, if we did if we did that, that might 
we might, the concern was we might regret it when trying so to fill the position. My big concern about it was that when we outsourced that department, we couldn't outsource it for half of what our treasurer wages well, were. Oh, I don't think you, I don't think you have to outsource again. We outsourced that position in the beginning because we needed someone with a high skill set right. to clean the mess. Yeah. Which is also why it took so much time and money. Right. Um, I, I think it's perfectly able to continue the way it's going right now. Um, yeah. Just from my conversations I've had with her, it seems to be going just fine. Yeah. We have project we'd like to get started. Is she started into on. the accounts yet? Hmm? Is she into the accounts yet? All but <laughs> two bank <laughs> accounts and two of our uh, withholding accounts. So we're the, still uh, struggling with those. But as far as the legal goes, you guys aren't even close um, on your legal. And so she was 22 hours last week, given that a lot of those hours are probably. We're still trying to get into banks. Right. Um, and still trying to just get into all of the state withholding sites. So like all of the retirement systems you have to get into. So I've been working with them too, because you have to have a town representative that's also on the account. So I'm the back person on all the accounts. So they've been leaving messages for me in the town hall instead of using my actual contact number. So it's taking twice as long to get her into right. all of these accounts. So really she was able to do all the work probably in 15 hours. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then we're missing some information that should have been in the office that actually wasn't. So we're trying to reprint and recreate all the information. Oh, lovely. Just yeah. not related to this, but you said we're way down on legal expense paid. Yeah, that's right. Just Would that have is it a possibility that we had a lawyer that worked for us as a town administrator that maybe yeah, kept us off KP so that new skill set may not be Kelly, there? Okay. Kelly put it up because right. she's not going to be here. Yeah. No, okay. my observation oh, okay. is I am talking to the lawyer a lot more now that Kelly is not around. Right. But we still only spent 35000 this year. Mm -hmm. So I don't, think there, I don't see any reason to go up to 80 here. We were spending 80 on the bad years here. Mm -hmm. 60 is sufficient. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, I'd be wary against it losing Ke Kelly, but 80, no. I... 80's, 80's yeah. You know, I think I'd be willing to, to go to the 60 that advisory went to. Mm -hmm. I just think 80 is a lot for a town this size. Well, what happened? You can't run out of legal. <laughs> You can run out of legal. Yeah. Like the, you run out of every other. I know, but if you run out of legal, you can't get money out of stabilization or anything like no, that. No, you have to use the reserve fund. Or no. you go to a special yeah. town meeting. Well, you have to, it's like you can use the reserve fund if you can justify that there was an unanticipated legal expense that drew you down, right? And that's easy for legal because if you have an unanticipated lawsuit, which they all are. Are they really? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, I think I, I'm perfectly comfortable at 60. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would be silly to go up to 80. And if we need the headroom, I, you know, twenty grand. I'm I'm willing to come down to sixty. I'll make a motion to change our to sixty for legal. I'll go with it. So I'll take, uh, thank you. I was going to say I think that's a second. All right. Is there any discussion? All right. Seeing as there's none, all in favor of adjusting the legal budget line to sixty thousand dollars, please say aye. 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 What, what did we average roughly? Um, uh, can you? Oh, aye. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, all right. Do you know what we averaged? I didn't bring that oh. with me. I had a lot of papers, but not. I mean, you've been around longer. Do you have any idea? Oh, I don't know where we've ended up in years, to be honest. I think usually roughly somewhere between like 40 and 55. Yeah. There were some years where it was really bad and yeah. it was really high. And others that was and what did we do in those years? We had to get it. Well, well, you can either get it from the reserve fund or you can do end of year transfers. And you yeah. know, we got it out of like municipal. Yeah, but do we ever go over? Yeah, and KP at the end of the year, I mean, they know if you're out of money, they'll wait. Yeah, yeah they'll hold their mm -hmm. voices. They'll wait. They'll still show up for town meeting and they'll hold their <laughs> voices. We're good. Increase our hourly rate next year. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so that that fifteen thousand would get us halfway there. Yeah. Let me, okay. 
a bunch of so power problems are solved. And that's assuming that all articles go as recommended? Um, well, this is operating budget, budget, which is separate from articles. Budget. Okay. I'm used to the... Okay. No, but in terms of, you know, money, money available... Because there's always that kind of sigh of relief. Oh, thank God that failed. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that, that, that's a warrant article, and the warrant articles are generally funded out of, are, are not funded well, out of the, the same things, money as operating. One budget. of the things we took off of our budget that advisory didn't was was uh, we took out our actuarial assessment for OPEB because it's because we did one this year, correct? Yeah. So it's, it's, or it's about to happen. When I actually looked into that, the weird thing is, so Amy had funded it. Oddly. So the way the actuarial, actuarial studies go is you do a full, then you do an update, you do a full, you do an update. So the budget should be going like this. Okay. So they're like 5700 5700 So she wasn't doing that. So the money that we budgeted two years ago, we spent the following year. The money that we have budgeted right now for fiscal year 24, we're not actually going to spend until fiscal year 25 because the the study is for the year ending fiscal year 24. Okay. So we're encumbering the funds. So okay. we're actually covered. We didn't right. need the money. Okay. So so it's fine that we zeroed that out. Yeah, so when we budget it going into 26, we'll need the $700 one. Okay. So it's going to go up and down. Okay. If yeah. we, so we're good. So. If we fund the fast food account for 10 employees, it'll decrease the OPEB liability. Might raise health insurance, though. We're going to cut off that grant, then, because it's not going to work out. <laughs> You're just not quite right, Brad. <laughs> so. Your bluntness is right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well you, you brought up you know, you know, our, our retirees, and you could drop that. <laughs> you basically need our closer, closer longevity eligible people who are going to retire. <laughs> Damn it. Um, you, should, you have to bring it down to, it's not really here, you got to bring it down to the school. That's, and where, in, yeah. that's where the real longevity is. We have a new food budget. Yeah. All right, so to make, to make these calculations and tracking easier, um, we've got a, let's see, I'm just looking. So we've got right now our recommendate for fire. Our recommendation for wages is 61.058, and fire chief salary is 12.854. And removing $15,000 from the legal budget will give us the headroom to um, go all the way up to the recommended amounts. My math shows that my requested plus four percent is 69.160 for fire wages. Uh, six now. Okay, that's and not as mine at eighteen. If you follow my mm -hmm. quest, yeah. And again, sixteen. Not being practical, and the fire fire service nationwide is the best deal you're going to get. Fire yeah. department sixty nine one sixty is barely over one full time equivalent. So. And I love when you do when you do your request. The federal government for in kind services figures that volunteers are worth thirty dollars an hour. So if you're trying to pay off like a beautification grant, oh, we're going to use volunteers. So okay, they're raised at thirty bucks an hour. I'm like, we don't get thirty bucks an hour. <laughs> Yet people picking up trash on a park <laughs> before it gets bulldozed are worth thirty thousand dollars for grant reimbursement, mm -hmm. which is great when it comes to things like Louisville, which looks great by the way. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. All right, so. All right, so the new, so yeah, I agree, my, my math is the same. The new total would be uh, 96,160 with your increases in headcount and callouts plus a 4% COLA. Uh, I have fire department increase at 69,160. Yes, I have that number okay, too. Okay, am I 18? I only get 87,160. Sorry, what about the 18,000? If fire department, everybody except me was with 4%, 69,160. Yeah. And then my 18. Okay. 87,160. Can you hit enter on that number so I can see what you guys are talking about? 
Um, I'm not entering a number. Okay. No, 87, what is, what is 87,160? I'm not following that number. My fire yeah, alarm, my fire alarm requested at 66.5. Wages plus, cheap plus wages plus 4%. Yeah. Gave me 69,160. Yeah. And then mine at 18,000. Yeah. I only came up to 87,160. Oh, you're saying 87,160 for the two wages for, lines combined. Right. Every, every ounce of payroll coming out of fire. So the two okay. lines, fire department wages, fire chief salary. Okay. Yeah, because hargan back when he was also highway superintendent, that's why the, the assistant fire chief is an hourly because back then it was just easier for him not to have a blended wage or anything. Mm -hmm. But now also, you're not gonna find somebody to replace it. Because as um, looking at what he makes a month now, adding a measly 1966 brings him up to 10,000 a year. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, especially for somebody that uses his own, his own vehicle. So. Mm -hmm. so that's where that's 65. Yeah. All right. Yep. All right, and that is a, let's see, that would be a. That's five and seven. So that's that's an increase between seventy five hundred and eight thousand dollars on weight over our recommendation, which was so which is be, which is based purely on cola and not any of the other increases right. yet. So, I mean, this makes sense to me, mm -hmm. especially if we reduce the legal budget. I'm still not quite sure. I'm a hundred percent convinced on the accounting, but on the treasurer's Just budget, do it. But you won't regret it. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Is it, if you look back historically, how many of the treasures you had before the outsourced, and yeah, um, were full time? I mean, Sandy okay, was. They were. They were all part time. Yeah. Sandy was part time. Um, she was what thirty hours? See, no. She was mean, thirty or thirty two. Well, no, she many? was. She was at least 32. The one before her was... Jim was because Sandy only came in in the morning. Jim was part-time. So we can't count Jim because Jim, the way Jim did business, so I don't even want to talk about when Jim and Betty were in this building and what went on with the books between those two departments. So you're living, See, I don't even know that. So you're living Sandy out of the town. What's that? You're living Sandy out of the town. All right, so it's, it's a, we'll just call it, it's a part-time position. It, w the amount of extra free time that happens when you have a full-time person in that office, it's just, it's too much fluff time. It's a part-time position. It's a part-time, not even 20 hours. It could be 20 if you want to she's call it. She's very quick. And we've... She's very quick. We, we don't, she is not even in Holland for 20 hours. And she's been there a year and a half, so it's not even like we have like a full-fledged, his well-oiled running system. I worked with the prior treasurer who had been there for 32 years, so we developed. Budget is 30 hours, 30 or 32, so, even though it's. I know that's not what you recommend. Before, before we get on to the treasurer, can we make any modifications to the fire department budget? Well, well, I I want to have the discussion around that to, because it's part of the overall headroom. But I would. Okay. I mean, well, I I support. Well, if we, if we, if there is enough, there is enough, there is enough headroom now that we can make the changes to the fire department and still be under the max level. Okay. And then, and then reducing the treasurer budget would be getting us further down to get closer to Lori's recommended $20,000 of headroom. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we fund the fire wages at 69160 and the chief salary at 18 k That's the number before COLA? No, after that COLA. Is. No, no, six, no. Sixty-nine one sixty is after cola. Is after cola. And eighteen thousand is is cola is is, is, is is built into that. Yeah, it's included. Yeah, that's so why are you voting it so high? Sixty-nine one sixty and eighteen. Yeah, because the the cola sixty-nine one sixty is with cola. Is with yes. cola. Yeah. For wages. And for then, fire and wages. then we're gonna vote for cola. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Sixty-nine one sixty is already has already had it reflects a cola a four percent cola. Yeah. Yeah, so these these are these are final numbers. I, I, I yeah. see these as final numbers. Okay, second. All right. Uh, okay. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of the uh, of the motion for the fire department um, budget lines uh, sixty nine one hundred and sixty for wages and eighteen thousand dollars for fire chief salary. Please say aye. 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 
All right, that is done. So six um, nine one okay. six zero eighteen thousand. All right, so those numbers are done. Don't worry about that. Oops, it's just telling me something's different oh, farther over. There were two things because I've heard like, well, they submitted without a COLA request. The budgets always come through like, do not just factor your request. Don't factor in COLA. So then I see the head table saying, well, they submitted without a COLA. We were told to. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather hear about departments that factored in COLA going in being told, don't do that ever again, mm -hmm. rather than those of us who said, okay, we we're told not to, and I didn't. Yeah. And the other think, one, just from historical, well, going back to the late 90s, yeah. I've been going to 26. This year, so I think we sent out guidance saying to put in the 4%, and then people still were it, all over the frame. It came, yeah. it came a little bit later. Well, I, don't know I think, was, I, yeah. I mean, going, I know that from, from a calculation standpoint, it's very important to have numbers without a cola so that we can say, well, what if, a co what if we go with this cola instead? Or what if we go with that cola instead? So as long as the wage requests break out, this is how much we want for non-cola reasons, whether more hours or pay or, or merit increase, mm -hmm. something like that. And then, and then here's a 4% cola or a 10% cola on top of that. Yeah. That's fine because that makes the 10, that whatever cola they pick very easy to back out. And sure. then from a spreadsheet standpoint, we can have a column. Well, what if we have a three percent cola? What if we have a five percent? The days cola? of doing the cola on the town meeting floor cannot be repeated. Um, Those are hours of our lives we're never going to get back. Uh, I'm. If so that person who's doing it on a poll calculator. If that happens, yeah. I will complain. No, I will. I will call out with the moderator and say, Mr. Moderator, those are not specific numbers. I request that the uh, the motion be made with specific numbers for every account number and updated totals. Thank you very much. Um, but historic, okay, I'll completely switch gears. His, uh, historically based, I know because she was my mother, um, prior, we've only had a separate treasurer, I think she's 27, right around the turn of the century. Prior to that, it was collector treasurer, and that was part time. And she had two, at best, two extreme part time clerks, and those people stopped on bulbs and address. Uh, and stamped on bulbs probably about those. So if you're looking, you know, well, how long have we had at this? Yeah, prior to roughly Y2K, it was a combined, we were collector treasurer. Um, Diane was, my mother was the last co combined collector treasurer. I know some communities are going back to it. Brenda would shoot me. Yeah, it's all over the place on yeah. now. Well, I think it's back on the upswing again. It used to be real popular and it dropped and now it's, it's coming back again. But yeah, so if you're looking, You've only got about 24 years of, well, how much has the treasurer time actually been? Prior to that, it was <coughs> one big desk, mm -hmm. so. All right, um, budget-wise, we are $3,500 below the maximum levy. So you might want to find a little more headroom. Mic drop. <laughs> but, but I believe we're done with the fire department budget, so I think we can let Chief Martell go. Let's go. You just don't like the running comment. Right. We're just done. Okay. No, we know you're going to leave. And we, it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like ripping the Band-Aid off. You're going to walk out and we're going to go, I wish I could leave. <laughs> just, just don't do neener, neener, neener too loud. Oh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> the birth of the fire I'm, I'm very gracious. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah. It's the way people want to be talked to. Nobody wants to hear about their green We're just being affected by this. Mm -hmm. That's going to be windy. I don't anymore either. Oh, God, no. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, reserve fund. Do we want to trim that down a little? Another five? And that's, that to me seems like a fairly straightforward one. Because we haven't spent a penny of it yet this year, correct? Uh, that is correct. Because they, the, the video server is coming out of town hall improvement. They approved um, forty five hundred. Oh, for the security camera. No, we no? did a brief thinking on that one. Um, that got switched to town hall Wages and expenses. Okay. So because it was one extra election this year, and it did not get budgeted. For oh, it. that's right. Mm -hmm. So, was thinking twenty five for reserve? That's, uh, I was. I think. Advisory went for they went ten grand less. Yeah, and that would be twenty five because we yeah because yeah. we we'd already trimmed five thousand off yep. at last week's meeting so this would bring this would align us with advisory. Yep. Uh, yes. Huh. 
And Lori, just game planning disaster scenarios. If the, um, it, what would happen to the budget if we passed the budget expecting a certain amount of state aid and the state aid came such that we were over, we would have to be over our levy limit to do that? We would have that special town meeting figure it the out? Budget, um, the state almost guarantees that they'll be finalized by the beginning of June. Okay. There's only been, I think, two years, and it was like the COVID years, that they didn't finalize the budget by but, June. But I, but I guess the question is, but, but once we approve our budget at town meeting, then if the state finalizes the numbers, and let's just say it's it's a disaster, and it, and state aid is $100,000 lower than expected, yeah, and blows, it blows, blows a huge hole in the budget, what happens? You either have to have a special town meeting, Mm -hmm. and revote your budget, allocating funds from stabilization or whatnot. Or reduce or it. Or reduce it. Mm -hmm. Or you try to make it up yourself on the recap. And okay. adjust your local receipts right. if yeah. you think you can. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. local you know, yeah. hundred, hundred, growth. Okay. Maybe yeah. new growth is not what we have it estimated at because I don't think Al actually gave me a number. I'm just using a super conservative average. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, we have it's a massive simple. new growth right now. Right, and when I do the budget... Al, Al didn't give you a number? No, because he said it wasn't certified. And every time I ask him for something lately, he just says, yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep that yeah. to Al's, myself and, until I have it approved. Yeah. Al's always been conservative with his new growth numbers. So I have it in there right usual. now as 55, which is actually less than we got last year. Last year we had 57 and some change was our number, but 55 is actually an average. We have way more We have way more building permits out there than we have historically. Right, but only the assessor can actually give me a true number, and he didn't give me a true number, so. Got it, okay. Um, it's, I mean, I'm sure it's not certified yet. I don't have a single town that's certified yet, but I mean, usually an assessor will at least go in and add up the building permits and give a really good guesstimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So chances are you, you do have a little bit more legal problem than we think. Mm -hmm. But it's safer to go conservative. So with the idea of the treasurer wages, our treasurer, Bringing that down to 30 hours, which would be uh, effectively three quarters, three quarters. Yeah. Drop that to 65, which is a little over three quarters, but it's a nice round number, and I don't feel like calculating exactly three quarters of 83,000. And you probably wouldn't even need that all for next year, and realistically, if you stuck with the same person, you could take one plan off of the health insurance. Mm-hmm. But my thinking is that would get us um, dropping to sixty-five thousand would be eighteen thousand dollars, and that would that would get us to our target headroom of twenty thousand dollars. With the thought being that where our state aid numbers are the cons are the are the conservative set of numbers, we have a conservative new growth, and we have the, this levy headroom, which I think is all good. I think the one thing I would like to do though is if we take it down to sixty-two four, which I'm fine with. Okay. Okay, or I said 65, but I said 65. But 62 four is what, um, at $40 an hour, 32 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, as if vacations didn't occur and all of that, it's 62 four. I'm fine with that number. You put more thought into it than I put into mine. <laughs> if, if my math is correct. and But my thought would be is that we actually double the assistant wages and actually get a real, a real assistant. assistant in place. Yeah, someone who can... When I met with both Brenda and Sharon, neither of them want an assistant in the office full-time, or part-time even, because neither of them have the actual work to give them. They think they'd be more sitting there, really? doing nothing. Brenda takes advantage of the senior workers and, and uses that, and the few times she's hired an assistant, it didn't work out because she wasn't giving the person any hours. Um, the only thing they both did say is they both would need at least one to two weeks a year for vacation coverage. What I've done in other towns where I have two separate people is they cover each other. Yeah. If they're off on opposite weeks because they're both bonded and able to collect money. Um, so that is an option. But both of them said they wouldn't be able to give someone actual work. 
Which has always been the problem, I think, when we've tried to hire assistants here is we end up with people who last long-ish, and then we've given them four hours a week, and they've left. Got it. I'm not wedded to it, so I'll make a motion that we go to 624 for the treasurer's office. Uh, sorry. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing as there's none, all in favor of going to $62,400 for treasurer wages, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And look, someone changed the number for me. Because I was the one that basically said, "Not hell no, we won't go from well, full-time on the treasurer. But if you look back to the salary study, we have rough numbers in there for the treasurer, and they were to match up to what we were paying, what we were going to up the collector to. Mm -hmm. Because they are matching positions. And then it just was blown out of the water two years ago. Mm -hmm. So this actually... Right sizes. It does. It does. All right, and that brings us to a headroom of almost thirty thousand dollars. Within two hundred dollars of it. Close enough. I think our work here is done. When are we going to have those numbers? Um, hopefully, the state will send something soon. I will double check with Al again to see if he can give me something for new growth. Because if he's thinking like twenty thousand more, then that's a lot of headroom. If you guys had cut something or left something off that now you were thinking maybe you want to add back, just if he has that yeah. much more in your I think, I think just about everything that we cut, we we haven't made any cuts we felt were like Or left drastic. something off, I guess, I oh. should say. If there was something that needed funding that didn't get funded. Um, but I'll double check with Al again, and hopefully, and we're waiting on the Senate right now, that's where it's stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. That never happens. Never. Mm -hmm. Is there any more discussion on the budget? No. no. All right. So therefore, uh, let's see. I believe number seven, agenda item number seven is done. So I think four is important enough. We should take that one on. Oh, I, can I just, uh, so where we're at is, uh, right now I'm trying to hammer so, out. Yeah, town administrator town candidates. Town administrator candidates. All right. So Mr. Aponte and I had a lovely couple of discussions. Uh, he's really excited to potentially come work for us. Um, he really <laughs> thinks that it'll be a good match. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be a good match. Um, uh, on salary, he was willing to accept the 93 that's currently on our budget provided we found a way to get him to basically 100K net, and he expressed zero interest in our insurance. So I'm trying to work with KP to come up with some language that within the contract that allows him to get compensated for opting out of our insurance. So the net cost to the town would be um, the same or less than if he took the insurance, and that gets him to basically an annual compensation total of mm -hmm. 100K. Um, so, um, and then there's some details around amount of time for notice if, if we chose not to continue his employment um, and the, the mechanism around continuation of employment uh, that we still need to work out some of the details and some of the language. Uh, but I would like a vote tonight that provided that we can get to acceptable legal terms around those pieces to authorize me to sign on behalf of the board. Um, let's see. From a the money the money is in the budget for to do what you want to do. Yes. Is that Will we need to rejig the budget at all to do it, or can we do it with the budget as it's currently structured? My understanding is we can do it with the budget as it's currently structured. Okay, then I have no concerns. Okay, so. So is that the motion? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. As there's no discussion, um, all in favor of this motion to uh, uh, please say aye. 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 
And just to, to, just to clarify, I'm trying to target a start date of the 15th, which is one of the reasons why I'm asking for the purview to just Good. iron out the language and get it done. Mm -hmm. And that way we can still try to hold to, hold yep. to that timeline. Right. The, the 15th is a Wednesday. Is there a particular significance to that date? No, I don't remember. Other than being the middle of the month? Just thinking about it, it's targeting the um, 20th on a Monday might be a, uh, a smoother start okay, rather than yeah. the week. It's, it's, it's like, I'll, um, I, I don't, we, didn't, we didn't vote on a, I don't think we voted we, on a start date. We, we it, was, it, was, it was noted as, as aspirational, so I just wanted to comment yeah. on it. Yeah, so, um, and we can still discuss it because it's part of the agenda item even if mm -hmm. we voted it. So, um, fundamentally you could say you could start as soon as we wanted them to, so mm -hmm. I just, I, I just had it in my head the 15th, so mm -hmm. it could be the 13th, it could be the 20th, mm -hmm. so, um, but he was ready to just start, right, with a, a little bit of notice, so, mm -hmm. and he's a ready to start kind of guy, so. <laughs> he, he's sharp as a guy who's not going to sit around waiting. Yeah, no, no, no waiting there, no All dust, right. no nothing, no nonsense, but nice. Yes. Right. So. All right. And so, all right, anything else to do there? No. All right. No, but that'll just, that'll allow me to just get her done. All right, agenda item number five, vote to rename 50, 350th do donations account to cultural council donation account. Mm -hmm. so this I'll make a motion to rename the 350th donation account to the cultural council donation account. Second. Uh, in discussion? Seeing as there's none, uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 aye thank aye. you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to authorize John Couture as the building inspector for property owned by Jeff Taylor. Second. All right. And for the home audience, um, Jeff Taylor is our building inspector, and he is not allowed to issue himself a permit by law, which makes a lot of sense. And John Couture has volunteered to offer his services to the town. Uh, he's the East Brookfield um, building inspector. So we will have a proper building inspector doing this, and one who can legally do the permit. Uh, and with that said, for the for the home audience, I but I want people at home to know what we're talking about. It's like, and I love the sound of my voice. Thank you very much. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and I'll make a motion to appoint Michelle Mandela and Crystal Roberts to the Cultural Council. Sorry. All right. Um, all in favor, um, sorry, all in favor, please say aye. Please say aye. 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 Motion to approve the select board meeting minutes for 4124, 4424, and 42624. Second. Who says? Aye. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Make a motion to acknowledge the fire department report for March. 2024, and EMS report for March 2024. Is there anything of particular note on there that we want to call out? I do not have a chance to look at them yet, and... Oh, yeah. There was. There was some anniversary. Oh, we have a firefighter anniversary? Uh, Jesse yeah. Merriam, three yeah. years. Daniel Usser and Luke Park and Sean uh, all oh. four years. Oh, on the emergency squad. Oh, thank you for, I, I went right past that one. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see, do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second to on this one, right? Yes. All right, all in favor of acknowledging the fire department report and the EMS report, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye thank you. Someone get me out of here. Um, second. All right. All in favor of adjourning this meeting at 10.02, please say aye. Aye. Oh, thank God, aye. Oh, I'm sorry.